Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. After a big win yesterday, tonight the Tigers hope to pull to within a first place tie with Kansas City. The Tigers come into play tonight just a game back in the Central Division standings, looking for their 80th win of the campaign. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Rod Allen. Jack Morris with us as well this week. Glad to have you with us as well. The Tigers' big win yesterday, Rod. A lot of offense early on in that game. And Victor Martinez, he just continues to click with three more hits yesterday. You know, it's good to see that Victor Martinez is finally getting his due. Not only here in Detroit, because everybody knows how good he's been since he's been in the Tigers' uniform, but really across the country. Take a look at Victor Martinez. He has a shot this year, and I mean a legitimate shot of winning the MVP, and not only the most valuable player, but he also has a chance of winning a batting title. Victor Martinez, since going back to July of last year, one of the best hitters in all of baseball. Not only does he maintain one side, but this guy has to maintain both sides of that plate. All right, Jack, yesterday Justin Verlander was really good, got the victory for the Tigers, and now Max Scherzer will go tonight. We know one thing about Max. He's usually pretty good in this ballpark. Well, he's 9-1. and one. That leads the American League, tied with uh, Felix Hernandez out in Seattle. So he's very good at home. He needs to do what, what uh, his teammate did yesterday. That's win a big game here in September and even the score with Kansas City, he can do that here tonight. Nine and one record at home for Max Scherzer. Hopefully ten and one after the ball game tonight. And after a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with Shannon Hogan. Coming up in this one here tonight, special night. It's the Tigers Wives My Favorite Things auction. Stay with us. We'll tell you more about that. Tigers Royals game two next.
Tigers right-hander Max Scherzer takes the hill here this evening. Tigers getting set to take on the Kansas City Royals. We'll check out the starting lineup that Max will face tonight, presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. It'll be Nori Aoki leading off in right field, then Omar Infante and Alex Gordon, who career has had good numbers against Max. Perez will catch Hosmer at first. Josh Willingham, the DH tonight. Mustakas Kane and Escobar. Your bottom three for Ned Yost and the Royals. But overcast tonight. Still a pleasant evening for baseball. We're set to get game two in this series underway. Tigers won the opener yesterday. Trail KC by just a game now in the American League Central. And here we go. The first pitch of tonight's ball game is outside to Aoki. Nori in the ball game last night was one out of four. Had a couple of RBIs. One always hammered back out of play. One ball, one strike. And Castellanos really crowding Ioki, their leadoff hitter. He's about five steps in front of third base on the left side of the diamond. Ioki gets lots of infield singles. He'll also bunt for a base hit down in that direction of Nick. Here's the 1 1. Back out of play. 1 and 2 now on Ioki. It also appears that when he gets on base, the Royals have a pretty good night. They are 34 and 9 when he scores a run. And apparently he'll bunt with two strikes because Castellanos really has not backed up a lot. And Ioki's got two strikes on him. And he'll look at a ball running the count to two and two. Max Scherzer in search of his 16th victory of the season. Here's the former Tiger Omar Infante waiting on deck. Low again, three and two now on the leadoff man, Aoki. Jack, I don't know about you, but with two strikes, I don't know too many third basemen that play any hitter as close as Castellanos continues to play Aoki. Well, I agree with that. This is usually at least even with the bag. And he walked him. They'll check the check swing, but he did not go, said Paul Emmel. Max Scherzer tonight presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. And you see Max Scherzer, the numbers this year. 20 decisions is making his 30th start of the year 15 and 5 9 and 1 at home that leads the American League tying him with Felix Hernandez of the Seattle Mariners He's 9 and 3 Max allowing the leadoff base on balls here and here is Infante mentioned this yesterday but speed at the top and the bottom of the lineup for the Royals and now time called as Infante steps out Max taking too long since the beginning of the 2010 season, no one in the American League has been able to protect home court advantage as well as Max Scherzer has. He has won 44 games right here at Comerica Park. He's been flat out getting it done. Infante waves and misses 0-1. It's an outstanding pitch there in all to Omar Infante. Omar Infante, really good fastball hitter. And therefore, Max pulled the string on him with a 85 mile per hour slider. He's some pretty good numbers right here. 44 and 13 career in this ballpark. Now Max with the 0-1 and Fonte looks at a ball outside. One ball, one strike. Yeah, we've well documented the fact that Mac will, Max will slow down the running game by simply holding the ball on the rubber, which makes it difficult for uh, some of these base dealers in the Kansas City Royals lineup to get a good jump off of Max and Ioki, their leadoff hitter, and would be one of those guys. Now the 1 1 lifted back out of play. Max doesn't have the quickest slide step, it's, it's about average, and that therefore he needs to pause and upset the base runners by different times of holding that ball at. On the mound, obviously you walk the leadoff man. You put yourself out of the stretch, basically to lead off the game. So he's putting himself in a hole right away. Aoki with 15 steals. He's been caught six times. Well, is there an element of throwing not only the base runners timing off, but the hitters timing off as well by holding the baseball so long, or are hitters able to kind of put that out of their mind? Well, good hitters are prepared no matter what time you throw it. But yeah, I think there's an element to it. You know, I'd be interested in Rod's opinion on that. I, I think uh, the longer you hold the ball for both base runner and a hitter, they're they're upset with that. They don't like that. They well, the want real, to time you. 
Well, the really good hitter just needs to step out of the batter's box. If he holds it for four and five seconds like Max will uh, do from time to time as a hitter, uh, you simply have to put up the right hand or the left hand if you are a left-handed batter and you ask the home plate umpire for timeout and you step out of the batter's box to regroup because basically the pitcher most of the time they want you to call timeout. Two and two on Infante. Runner bluffing and it's popped up. First base side is their room. Avila is back out of play on top of the dugout roof. There's certainly a cat and mouse game that is played not necessarily this time of game early in the game like this but it doesn't really matter when it is a lot of times pitchers will want to get into a hitter's head and they'll hold and hold and hold till they call timeout a lot of times hitters take a long time getting in the batter's box that can upset a pitcher's rhythm out there and that too can wear on a pitcher just underway here at the ballpark the Tigers Royals game two in this series. Max again with the 2 2 and it's lifted in the air to center field shallow and it's going to be caught on the run by Davis. Let's take a look at the Tigers defensive alignment this evening behind Max Scherzer left to right you've got Martinez Davis Hunter Davis in center field 988 fielding percentage in 33 games in center field third to first Cassianos Romine Kinther Victor Martinez out to Vila. Getting another start behind the plate as is Romine. Romine has now played three days in a row. Here is the left fielder Alex Gordon who is 0 for 2 yesterday. Gordon has been one of their top performers this year. Leads the team in home runs and RBIs. Max whirls again to first base. Aoki is back. Alex a really good two way player. And Tigers have thrown him lots of off speed pitches at the bottom of the strike zone. They occasionally will climb the ladder and to change his lion level. Then they simply go right back downstairs to get him out. And Gordon looks at a ball outside 1 0. We we're talking yesterday about player superstitions. And I sometimes wonder if managers have superstitions. Romine in there for the third straight day. The Tigers have played well here in a couple games. I think sometimes managers want to roll with the hot guy too. Here's the 1 0. Well, Brad Osmus says he does not have superstitions. However, there was a stretch where Jabba Chamberlain was taking out the lineup card uh, three, four games in a row. They had won every game. So I think that qualifies <laughs> as superstition, doesn't it? Well, but Brad that. says, no, I don't have any. I think it's about eight or nine days Java was trying it out there with that <laughs> starting lineup. Here's the 2 0. Foul tip. And Vila unable to hold on to it. 2 and 1. There's that fastball upstairs. Max not afraid to go after you on a fastball count. He simply says he's going to let his fastball eat. And most of his fastballs will be a belt buckle or higher. Very difficult for most hitters to catch up to at 94 miles an hour. Max has always had great movement in the strike zone. Very difficult to pick up the ball coming out of his hand. So he's got an advantage a lot of pitchers don't have. Throughout the league, you talk to hitters that face Scherzer and they say he's one of the toughest to pick up the ball. Leadoff walk here to Aoki and Fonte is fly to center field. Gordon waiting on a 2 1. Runner goes. Here comes the throw from Avila, and it is in time. Aoki is out. Outstanding throw by Alex Avila. Give Max a lot of credit. Aoki basically forced the issue. He did not really get a good jump because Max holds the ball and he really shuts down the running game. He decided to take off anyway, and throwing has been a really big part of Avila's game this year. And you cannot make a better throw. And what a nice uh, receiving the ball from Romine right over the bag. Simply applied the tag. Tayoki's left leg. Clearly out. Excellent tag, excellent throw. And the bases are empty now. The 3 1 is outside, and Gordon will get the walk. From a pitcher's perspective, you get a catcher helping you out behind the dish. You walk the leadoff man. Now it's even more evident how important that put out was. He walks Gordon. That would have put runners at first and second. 
Here's Avila's numbers this year at throwing out would be base dealers. He's thrown out 28 percent. And Oki is his latest victim. That'll bring up Salvador Perez. Perez was hitless in yesterday's opener, 0 for 4. And he looks at a strike going one. That's something that uh, Perez usually does not do. He does not take a lot of pitches. He averages only three pitches uh, per plate appearance. So he's always swinging early and swinging often. Pretty impressive numbers right there off Max Scherzer. Yeah, 391, not too shabby. With the success Max has had. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Romine will handle this one. And Perez is out. And that's it. Couple of walks against Max, but no damage done thanks to Alex Savino. For the first tonight game two in this series between these two teams Tory Hunter back in the lineup this evening and the Tigers starting lineup presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers Kinsler Hunter Cabrera at the top Martinez Martinez Castellanos in the middle and Nick has 30 doubles this year in his rookie campaign Avila Romine Rajay Davis rounded out tonight for the Tigers and they are facing the left handed offerings of Jason Vargas Vargas he's making his 27th start of the year 11 and 7 from the year he won his last start at Kauffman Stadium back in Kansas City against Texas four to one. So he's been on a little bit of roll. Pretty good year for him. Tim Hortons will sponsor the starting defense of the Kansas City Royals here this evening. And it's a pretty good defense. It's an athletic defense in the outfield. They cover a lot of ground. That would be Gordon Kane and Ioki. In the infield, they can catch the ball. That's Mustakis, Escobar, and Fonte Hosmer. Hosmer made two airs last night. First two airs in a game of his career. So He's legit down there. Rare off night last night for Eric. So here is Ian Kinsler to start things off. And Scherzer is able to dodge a couple of walks in that first inning. Vargas, the lefty, is 31 years old out of Apple Valley, California. And Kinsler takes the first pitch on the outer edge. Strike one. And Vargas is one of those guys that has all four pitches. He's got the fastball. He's got the curve. He's got the cutter. He's got the slider. He's got to change up. And one of the things that I admire about him, even though the top fastball only about 90, he is not afraid to come inside with that heater to open up that change up on the outside part of the plate against the right hander. He pounds the strike zone. He's usually when he's good. He's always ahead in the count. We'll see how that works out here tonight. Here's the 1 1. Talked about this a little bit last night on our post game wrap, but do you think this guy gets lost a little bit in the shuffle and a, a rotation that has James Shields and Ventura, the kid that throws 100 miles an hour? I do. I really think that he is a above average pitcher. He's done a great job for Kansas City this year. Kinsler hits a fly ball, shallow left field for Gordon. And one gone in the Tigers first. If Vargas really, that's nothing new for him for pitching in the shadow of other guys. In the starting rotation when he was in Seattle. 
it was King Felix Hernandez that was getting all the attention along with Doug Fister. Bring up Tory Hunter. Hunter, a four game hitting streak, had a big day yesterday, three out of five with a double, scored a couple of runs. He just performs a whole lot better when he's in that number two slot. He just kind of gives up uh, trying to pull everything. He tries to drive the ball the opposite way with two strikes. He'll just try to put the ball in play to move the line moving for the big fellas, and that would be Miguel Cabrera and Victor Martinez. Here's the 0 1. Pulled on the ground. This time it's going to find a hole back up the middle into the left center. One on and one out. Well, we told you about the uh, auction, the Tigers' wives' auction going on tonight. Miguel Cabrera has his own basket that is being auctioned tonight. The Essentials Coffee and Cigars basket. It includes an autographed bat, photo, baseball, and baseball card, autographed Tigers coffee mug. Coffee gift card from Dunkin' Donuts and a whole lot more, including cigars, a torchlighter, and a humidor. So, this is the Miguel Cabrera. He's got some Cubans in there, some Monte Cristos. 313 471 2100 if you'd like to bid on the Miguel Cabrera, the Essentials Coffee and Cigars basket. Here is Cabrera. Two out of five yesterday with an RBI. And batting 311, Miguel's power numbers have really surged in the last week and a half. He'll shoot that one to right field, slicing. He's going to dump it in, base hit. This might just get a run in. Let's see. Hunter coming to third. Nope, they're going to stop in there. And Cabrera has a loop double to right. That is the 45th double of the season for Mel Miguel Cabrera. The home run numbers are down, but he continues to get two baggers. Vargas already throwing a lot of change-ups in this game. Mickey stayed back as long as he could. He hit it right off the end of the bat, but he couldn't have taken the ball and thrown it out there with his bare hand any better than where this one landed. A double off the wall in the gap or a double down the line. It doesn't matter. It looks like a line drive. Hunter coming to third easily. Stop there. Aoki, the right fielder, was playing so deeply in a round towards center that by the time he got there, Mickey was able to cruise to second with his 45th double. I know it's early, but uh, the Kansas City Royals do have a base open, and Max Scherzer is pitching for the Tigers, and he's really good in this particular ballpark. They may just pitch around Victor Martinez and then go for the double play ball off the bat of J.D. Martinez. That might be their best chance of getting out of this inning, especially as hot as Victor's been. Pitchers have to take it upon themselves to understand situations. It's not necessarily coming from Ned Yost with an intentional walk here. Vargas has to know that himself that be careful with the hottest hitter in the game right now. And Victor, you got a base open. If you give up a run or two here and you allow Victor to beat you in the first inning, that might just be all you get here tonight because, I mean, the Royals really have not been scoring a lot of runs lately. Victor ahead 1 0. Swing and a miss. Lots of change pieces already thrown by Vargas. He'll start to go inside with a few fastballs here soon, especially to the right handed batters. Well, it's no secret the Tigers would like to score first in this series, and that's one of the keys that Brad Osmus has said to beating the Royals because of the back end of their bullpen. You get to the sixth inning, and if you're trailing, it's awfully tough to come back against them. The Tigers were so good at that yesterday, scoring a, a big six run inning. You also kind of take their legs away from them if you can get a healthy lead early in the game because they steal a lot of bases. They've got 133 on the season, which paces the American League. So you take their legs away from them, and they're challenged in that power department. JV gave up a couple of early runs in the game yesterday, but settled in really nicely. Two balls, one strike on Victor Martinez. Bounce again, three balls, one strike. Now you can see that Vargas is being very careful with Victor here. A lot of pitchers will go hard early in the game. And uh, typically they're the power type guys like a Verlander and a Scherzer that 
will pound the fastballs early and Vargas just the opposite. He's going to go slower. Now we're just going to go ahead and put him on. Really no uh, point in taking a chance after falling behind three and one. Just put him on. And here's why because he's our T Mobile game changer. I mean, if you look at the numbers that Victor Martinez has been able to put up since August 1st, fellas, these are really, really good. He's been getting off. No one's gotten more hits. No one has driven in more runs. And of course, the batting average is sitting at 381. And that's why he's in contention for winning his first. American League batting title. Well, since July the 1st, he's batting 349, which leads not only the American League, but all of Major League Baseball. That's uh, July 1st of last season, so it's been over a calendar year. It's a high, towering fly ball to right field. Aoki going back to the track in front of the wall to make the catch. Hunter will tag and score. It's an RBI for J.D. Martinez. We met uh, J.D. Martinez's parents uh, before the game today. They came up to the booth with uh, the Tigers legend Willie Horton. And what a really good at bat here by J.D. Martinez. With the bases loaded, a lot of people would get greedy here and try to drive in a bunch of runs. But he knows Vargas is not going to throw it by him. So he created the bat angle so he could loft it deep enough to right field. Just to score the one run. He just wanted to do his job by making sure he didn't pull off the baseball from the soft tosser. Vargas on the mound. And he almost hit it out. Here is Castellanos now with two gone. A run in. RBI 64 for JD. Nick looks at a ball low and away. Here, Jason Vargas, you can get an out here. You're going to feel pretty good about this inning. It got ugly in a hurry with Torrey Hunter and Miguel getting hits. And walking Victor and only have one out and get out of this inning with only one run. We'll see what Nick can do here. Castellanos two out of four yesterday. And there's a strike on the outer edge one one. It's kind of good to see the offense perk up the last couple of days that final game against the Giants in the first game here against the Kansas City Royals. Especially the way they've been playing here at Comerica Park. They just have not had a great record here at home this year. Strike called 1 2. Jack, did you ever do what uh, Vargas just did there? Quick pitch the batter? Not very often. Um, not that I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I just probably wasn't able to think that quick on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> you're honest, at least. Yeah, at least you're honest. <laughs> The one two is low two and two. It's a beautiful thing when you've got talent. I think pitchers are like hitters in a way that we're, we're all victims of uh, routine and habit and you get into some kind of rhythm on the mound. You tend to stay with that. Cabrera the runner is second Martinez at first the two two. It takes a ball low and that fills the count now at three and two. So with a couple of base runners that are not the fleetest of foot, they will get a head start here on 3-2. Yeah, they'll need that head start too. Here is Avila waiting on deck. Vargas ready with the 3-2. And now he'll step on. I think it goes. An ongoing argument concern is team speed versus team power. You know, Tigers have a lot of power, and yet you got guys that can clog up the bases like this, and Kansas City doesn't have that power. Swing and a miss. Castellanos was out in front, and Vargas able to minimize the damage. He gives up just one run.
Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. By the Chrysler Great American Drive event, great deals going on now. And by Lee Lenaw Coffee, 100% fresh air, bed roasted Michigan signature coffee. Back here at the ballpark where the Tigers' wives are manning the phones right now as the Tigers' wives auction. If you'd like more information on all the different baskets that are uh, available tonight that you can bid on, go to tigers.com slash wives and you'll get more information on which one you'd like to bid on. In the meantime, Hosmer goes the other way and has a leadoff base hit for the Royals. Eric had a big game yesterday and starts it off with a single here tonight. Yeah, hit two high fastballs off Verlander yesterday, and right there, Max Scherzer throws a fastball outer half. Hosmer just going with it, so he's on the fastball right now. It's a good sign of a really good player. Although Hosmer's still very young, he committed a crucial error yesterday, but still uh, did not let that affect him on the offensive end. Here is Josh Willingham, who is serving as the DH. In the ball game here tonight. Jack, you saw him in Minnesota quite a bit over the past couple of years. What kind of player the uh, Royals get here? Well, they got a guy they needed uh, in their eyes is that with one swing of the bat, he can send the ball over the fence. The trouble is, Josh just hasn't had the consistency with that one swing that he used to. But they needed somebody from the right side that could fill a hole while Hosmer was out. Pop up shallow right field looking like trouble going to drop base hit. So blue single for Willingham and the Royals now have first and second nobody out. That'll bring up Mike Moustakis. Ned Yost trying to get his team to the playoffs and the Royals organization to the playoffs for the first time since 85. In his fifth season as Royals skipper. Got a good young team that has uh, come of age this year, and they are in the thick of it. The final two and a half weeks of this season. It seemed like forever, people around baseball were talking about the Royals and the youth and all the kids that are someday going to be these stars, and the Vistakas and the Hosmers. And now it seems like Ned Yost has got them thinking that they can play at this level, that they can go beyond regular season. Dayton Moore, their uh, general manager, he's been in play there since the beginning of the 2006 season. He's done a marvelous job, uh, not only at the major league level, but as scouts. They've done a nice job at drafting some very good players. He's also made some really nice additions. Wade Davis would fall into that category. Jason Vargas, uh, their starter tonight. Big game, James Shields. They've got a nice mix of youth and some veteran leadership. That trade of James Shields and the Will Myers deal was a is somewhat of a gamble and it looks like it's paid off. They got their ace. Here's the one one. One and two on Moustakis. Not only did they get an ace with James Shields but they got an innings eater. They needed a guy that could lead that staff and show them how to go deep into games. He pitched a whale of a game his last start in New York. One to nothing shutout. Yeah, that's a place where he had really not had a lot of success in the Yankees. They had worn out James Shields in his big league career back to the days when he was wearing that Tampa uniform. Max with the one two. Mustakas fouls it off the mask of the umpire. That's Eric Cooper. He says, I'm okay. Oh. Check that out. He about knocked his mask off. One and two on Mustakis. Lead off singles by Hosmer and Willingham. Swing and a miss, and Max carved him up. Now get to see that last pitch. Max takes a little off his breaking ball. You can see the spin on that slider, but great location. Took it off way out in front is Mike Mustakis. Good out right there for Max. That's the pitch that has allowed Max Scherzer to get to Cy Young status. And he came to the big leagues with a fastball slider and a change. But the last couple of years, he's perfected that curveball. It's been very effective 
for him primarily against left handed batters. Here's Lorenzo Cain. It's almost not fair when you get a reputation around baseball that you're a guy that throws in the high 90s. And then all of a sudden you learn a pitch where you can take something off and locate it down in the zone. And it's a change up basic change up pitch whether it's spinning. Like a slider or spinning like a curveball. Bottom line is it's an off speed pitch and you get that hitter way out in front. Well, the other thing about Max Jack for so many years, they said he's got a delivery that's just so very difficult to repeat. It's not a repeatable delivery yet. It seemingly he has done a really good job at that, which has helped him take that next step. Well, it's it's somewhat unorthodox, but the one thing he does well is drive towards the target. He doesn't spin off the ball. His body is basically he's using all his energy towards the catcher. And you know. Pitching coaches will get deep into all these. Conversations about where your body should be but. Great hitters have balance great pitchers have balance. And they use all their energy. In the right way and for a pitcher that means focusing towards home plate. You don't want to be spinning off balls. You don't want to land on your heel. Kane waits on an 0 1. Swing and a miss 0 2. 94 that time for Max. He's ahead in the count now. No balls, two strikes. And Max can simply go upstairs with another fastball in the mid 90s and throw it by Lorenzo Kane, or he can simply throw an outstanding breaking ball, which would be down and away from him that to get the out. Kane 320 this year with men in scoring position, so these are. Instances where he's been very good. But he's in a big hole now. 0 and 2. Hosmer, Willingham started the inning with base hits. And now Kane finally steps out. And again, Scherzer are doing what he does with runners in scoring position. Runners on first base. Just hold the ball. Make that hitter a little nervous. Kane finally decides that he's had enough. They've got a lot of guys that steal third base on their team, but Hosmer would not be one of those guys, although he does have the ability to steal a base. Checked it. Did he go? Yes, he went around. Strike three, says James Hoy, and a couple of strikeouts for Max. Two gone. That is an outstanding 0 2 pitch. Well, he gets to expand the zone here. Another breaking ball starts on the outside corner, breaks off the plate. Kane just can't quite hold up. And Max gets an important second out of the inning. Now we'll see if Scherzer can finish it off here. He's thrown 30 pitches so far. He's got Alcides Escobar, the number nine hitter. Batting 276 this year. He's been pretty hot lately, over 300 in his last 10 games. Swing and a miss. Escobar has knocked in 44 this year. Yesterday was 0 for 3. He's also one of those guys that you have to watch with his speed. A lot of infield hits, 23 this year. Here's the 0 1. Little pop up. First base side. Martinez under it. That'll end the threat. No runs. Two hits. Two men left. They'll go to the bottom of the second.
Bottom of the second, here are our predictions for tonight's Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's new triple cheeseburger for just $2. I've got Ian Kinsler tonight. Rod, who you got? Victor, he's my Tiger. Look at Jack going with the pitch. Well, you know, I, I picked a guy with three hits yesterday, and, and I didn't even get honorable mention, so I'm going with, uh, with what I know. That's the pitcher. You sound a little bit bitter about that. <laughs> Vargas back to the hill now in a one nothing game Tigers will send a Vila to the plate. Romine and then Davis to follow. Now it's had a nice day yesterday RBI had a double finished one for two. And Vargas works at home. And it's in there for a strike on one Vargas threw 19 pitches in the first inning. And he had to throw at least. 12 change ups. Well, Avila's gotten him a couple of times in the past. Alex hits 286 against him, but two homers against the lefty. That one missed outside, 1 1. Second baseman Infante is on the grass in short right field. As they play Avila to pull, this is basically the uh, alignment you'll see most teams use. That was yanked foul. Speaking of Avila, here is the Alex Avila casting a line basket in our wives' auction tonight. It features an autographed bat, cleats, and baseball. Alex loves to fish, so there's a bunch of fishing stuff in there fishing bait, lures, hooks, lines. And uh, he likes ice cream too ice cream coupons and insulated bags. So that is the Alex Avila casting a line basket to bid 313 471 2100. What's his bid up to? 450 bones right now. I guess we've got a lot of fishermen out there. Well, there's there's a lot of room left there because that Yeti cooler is worth about 300 itself. Really? So. Well, let's get that bidding up then. You would know all about that, Jack. Uh, but I you do know. Deep I do know a few things about fishing. Three and two. By the way, proceeds go towards the Detroit Tigers Foundation. All of our proceeds in the uh, auction, the wives' auction tonight. Roman waiting on deck. Here's the 3 2. Vila takes low. That's a walk. Second walk of the game now for Vargas. The off man on. Here's Andrew Romine. Two out of four last night for Romine. His average now is up to 224. And as Rod was touching on earlier, he's getting a little bit more extended playing time. And you know, he's been a guy, Rod, that really has handled his uh, position defensively really well. But now he's starting to swing the stick a little bit. You know, what kind of amazes me about Romine is the fact that he does not get a lot of reps as far as playing in games. But when Brad Ausmus does call on him, he doesn't make any mistakes out there. He fills his position well. He's a switch hitter, he puts the ball in play. He steals you an occasional base. It's a nice backup infielder. He, along with Eugenio Suarez, seeing uh, most of the playing time early on this season. Here's a bunt back to the mound. Vargas going to go to second, and his throw there is in time. He threw a clothesline down there to second base. That's a real nice play there by Vargas. He anticipated that he would have a shot at throwing out of Vila, who was a catcher who does not run well. He did not miss a beat. He simply grabbed it with the glove. He transferred to the throwing hand and made a really nice firm throw to the shortstop, Alcides Escobar, and a very aggressive slide by Avila, making sure that Escobar had no shot at turning it over. Boy, is that a clean, good slide by Alex. It's a perfect slide, isn't it? Oh, yes. Nicely done. That's the way the game is supposed to be played right there. Both managers can really be upset at that. I know that nobody wants to see anybody hurt, especially a great defender like Escobar is, but good aggressive slide by Alex. Here's Rajay Davis. One on one out. Davis did not play in the opener yesterday. Two for seven on the homestand. Vargas getting ahead with strike one. Tigers have had to lean on Rajay quite a bit since the trade of Austin Jackson taking over a lot of the reps in center field. That is shot foul down the first baseline. 
Hard hit ball out of the reach of Eric Hosmer. One run, two hits for the Tigers. No runs, two hits for the Royals. Sack fly by J.D. Martinez in the first score, the only run. Roman lately has been in a running mood. Got 10 steals on the year now. Another foul back out of play on two. And even though Vargas is a, a left handed pitcher, he really does not slow down the running game. He's got a slide step, but he does not have a great pickoff move over to first base. Well, he did himself a big favor there. As a pitcher, you sometimes have to become that fifth infielder. And the only way you make a play like he just made is you have to anticipate it. You have to know where that runner is and know his running ability. It's ball high. See it again. Watch how Vargas just jumps off the mound. He anticipates. He sees him square around, and he he immediately knows he's going to second base. There was no hesitation, and that's one of those plays where if you hesitate at all, you just take a nice easy slop throw over to first base and get get the hitter at the plate. Off the end of the bat. Davis 286 right now stands fourth in the American League in steals. Did you see Ron? He's exceeded expectations. He has met expectations. Either either one of those. I would say he's exceeded expectations. 286 batting average with all the bags that he's stolen. He's shown some occasional pop with seven home runs, and he's nearly driven in 50. Uh -oh. Oh, Driven deep to left. This ball's going to leave the ballpark, and there's that pop. A two run shot. I see you right there. And it's 3 nothing Tigers. I was lucky enough to watch Rajay play all last year in Toronto. And I know his athletic ability. He has that kind of power, but what he can do on the base pass even more. Every home run Rajay Davis has hit this year has been the left field. He's got some pop in that direction. And that is the fourth home run this year that Vargas has given up to Tigers bats. That's a fastball about 88 miles an hour right around the belt buckle that usually they don't get to the catcher's glove. <laughs> well that one didn't. That one cleared the bullpen. Nothing worse than the feeling of basically releasing the ball. And that's all it is. It's coming barely out of your hand as a pitcher and you know. You're yelling no! Because you know what's going to happen. It happens that quick. Right? It does. Rajay hits number eight. Kinsler shoots one on the ground at third, right at Mustakis. Let's take a look at the glove of Salvador Perez, where he wanted uh, this pitch here. He wants the ball up, and it appears that he's going to hit the glove. And Perez just drops the glove and drops his head. He didn't get it out enough. Well, if you only got 88, you really can't pitch yeah. upstairs. Guys like Verlander, guys like Max, they can pitch upstairs in the mid 90s. But if you only got 88 in your hip pocket, it's dangerous when you go upstairs. Strike called on Torrey. Hunter had a base hit, scored a run in the first. Well, they're following the blueprint. Score early against these Royals and stay out of the back end of their pen. They've done it now in the first two games. There's a ground ball. Same spot, another base hit for Hunter. It's two for two. Typically, pitchers want to climb the ladder on guys that have that uppercut swing. Torrey Hunter just putting the ball in play. He's not over swinging. Taking that bat now directly to the baseball, which allows the barrel of the bat to stay in the strike zone a very long time. And with Torrey's skill set, he's really performing well down the stretch. We're going to Miguel Cabrera salary drive for uh, Torrey Hunter. Not only does he want a win a world championship, but he might be looking to play another year or two. He's got five hits now in this series. And Mickey fouls it back 0 1. Kind of surprised though the one thing that Vargas really has not done here today that he usually does against everybody. Because most teams do have a lot of right handers in the lineup against him. 
he really hasn't gone inside no. with a fastball yet. No, that pitch to Torrey Hunter right there can't split the middle of the plate any better. Those are the kind of pitches that hitters have to hit. Tigers now have four hits. They have scored three runs. Rajay with a home run here in the second. As Cabrera cuts and misses. Oh, and two on Miguel. Cabrera blooped a double down the right field line his first time up. His 45th of the year, which leads the American League. Yes, his home run numbers might be down a bit. He's got 22 of those, but the doubles are up. Vargas came in off a pretty good outing. Six and two thirds, no runs in his last start, a 4 1 win against Texas. He's already given up three runs in this game. Bouncing in, 1 2. We talked about how the Tiger offense gave JV a bunch of runs to work with yesterday, and he did a great job of. Managing the score and ultimately gaining a win. Scherzer has the opportunity again here tonight. Now a three-run lead. You only got to get Max one or two runs here at the Mark Park. If you tuned in late, we told you that Max is 44 and 13 right here at Spacious Comerica Park since the beginning of the 2010 season. The 44 wins most in the American League. And you can bear a hopping around now after that last win. I think if you write the script as a general manager, you get a pitcher. You'd rather see him win most of his games at home. Certainly important to win as many on the road, but you come home and have wins in your home ballpark. That's what puts butts in the seats. Yeah, no doubt. Tigers this year, 37 and 32 at home. Yeah, that's after several seasons of 50 or more wins right here at Comerica Park. Miggy taking a few extra moments to get back in the box here. One and two the count. Two and two now on Cabrera. Vargas doesn't walk many. It's been uh, one of the keys to his success. A little under two walks per nine. You got Victor waiting on deck. He did walk a man here to start the second, had an intentional walk in the first. Foul back out of play. Well, the Royals thought a lot about Jason Vargas, a lot of him, I guess. They signed him in this offseason to a four year deal, and they have not really opened up their wallets to a lot of pitchers. They've had a lot of young ones themselves. Their son, their selves, broke kind of through their farm system, and a lot of them just couldn't hold down that starting rotation spot. They filtered through the bullpen, and some of them disappeared. Green two. Did that signing take you by surprise? The four-year deal with Barton? I think it did for a lot of people. Uh, the number of years more than anything else. Yeah. But I think that shows what Kansas City really thought of him. They think that he's been durable. He's still relatively young, and uh, he's a left-hander. That's another plus. So the count is full now. That means Hunter will be on the run with two outs. And he takes a walk, ball four. Second walk in the inning, third of in the game now for Vargas. Bring a meeting on the mound, and while they talk about it, with another threat brewing here, we'll remind you that uh, you can enjoy, or as you enjoy, cold one. Look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. So Dave Island is out there to talk with Jason Vargas. What are these conversations typically like, Jack? Well, I've always 
said that whenever you see a pitching coach leave the dugout, it's not a good conversation. <laughs> I never had one come out to tell me how good I was doing. Great job, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember, and I, I want to share this with you. Roger Craig came out of the mound a couple times in, in one game, and in between innings on the dugout, I said, Roger, every time you come out there, I realize I'm in trouble. Why don't you just stay in the dugout? Well, Sparky made him come out, so this next time he came out, he never said a word to me. <laughs> Not one word. He Lance, just stood there. Lance Parrish looked at him and me and thought, what the heck is this all about? I got out of the inning on next two outs, went up to Roger, and I said, that was the greatest pep talk you ever gave me. <laughs> Here's the arsenal tonight 57 percent fastball for the left hander. Vargas now facing Victor Martinez with two on. Two runs in here in the second. So Roger Craig actually walked out there and said not a word to you. not a word. Nice. He did exactly what I asked him to do. The bottom line is pitching coaches come out to have you regroup. They yeah. want they're trying to help you. They're trying to get you to. Focus and be able to throw the ball where you want to. Tigers locked in this evening against Jason Vargas. Very few of them have left the strike zone to swing at that changeup, and he continues to try to extend off the plate outside to most of the right handers. And they are forcing him into throwing the ball over the plate when he does. Uh, they've been able to barrel him up. Yeah, that's part of his game to get the hitter to expand the strike zone. And when the Tigers' offense is disciplined enough to lay off that pitch, it's going to make his day a lot tougher. Two and one. He's 11 of 13 in first pitch strikes, uh, which gives you a really good idea of just how well the Tigers have been able to lay off those second and third pitches, which he's not throwing over the plate. They're not chasing, not here yet today. Yeah, and he's gone to four ball, three ball counts, despite the fact that he's been really good on a first pitch strike basis. Three walks already, and not through the second inning. And you mentioned how few that he does typically walk. Here's the 2 1. Three balls, one strike on Victor. Looks like he just really wants no part of Victor here today. It's really kind of like the situation in the first inning. Well, he's got an open base. You got another base open? It's not first base, but he's got an open base. It's third base. JD Martinez on deck. This will be the 50th pitch that Vargas has thrown tonight. And it's a ground ball back up the middle. And Fonte will flip to Escobar to end the inning. Tigers get a pair. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire.
Hurd at Comerica Park. And with more of the Tigers' Wives auction tonight, we check in with Justin White. All right, Mario, thanks a lot. We're down here at our Fox Sports Detroit Brush Fire Grill. The Wives answering the phones. They've been ringing all night, and we're pleased to be joined by Ashley Holiday, wife of Tigers catcher Brian Holiday. What is it like to be a part of an event like this that raises money for such a great cause? You know, it's really awesome. It's kind of nerve-wracking because the phones just keep going on and on and on. They're ringing right now. You're literally running out of, like, um, spit in your mouth is what <laughs> you feel like. And you're taking all this information from awesome people that are willing to at least donate or make a bid on a basket. So. Now, your husband's basket is actually a combination basket with Tori Hunter. The theme is holiday is hitting the links with Hunter. So I assume that means plenty of good golf gear. Plenty of good golf in there. Um, there's actually a brand new Mizuno golf bag that's in there as well. Um, some Pro V1 golf balls. Not, you know, Brian was very particular about what I put. Those in. are high-end balls, I believe. Um, and a golf polo, a Detroit Tigers golf polo, I should add. Um, and then along with some awesome memorabilia from both players, Brian and Tori. So. And if you'd like to place a bid, there's the information. Call 313-471-2100. The phones are ringing, and who knows, maybe Ashley Holiday will answer your call. You never know. Ashley, thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the night. Have a good night. Mario, back to you. All right, Justin, thanks. And uh, one final uh, word on the uh, bidding tonight. It ends after the first pitch of the eighth inning. So you've got most of the night here to kind of figure out what you want to bid on. But uh, make sure you go to Tigers.com slash wives, and you will see all of the baskets there and what's available. In the meantime, Scherzer has a 3 nothing lead to work with here in the third. Infante batting with one out after the ground out by Aoki. There's a strike call 0 2. Omar fly to center field in his first at bat. Max 8 of 11 in first pitch strikes and his pitch count much better shaped than Jason Vargas. Vargas has already thrown 50. Max that's his 37th pitch of the evening. Jack we talk a lot about the uh, first pitch strike stack. I mean is that. As big a stat as most of us make it out to be. I think it's bigger, quite honestly. And it took me half of my career to figure out how important it is, but it turns a a guy that usually doesn't get any hits. A great pitch location for Max. It turns a 200 hitter into a 300 hitter. You know, it's that type of thing. Here we see the location on that last pitch. Just dot in the glove of Alex Avila out or half. 95 mile an hour fastball. He's just getting loose. Two up, two down here in the third. That'll bring up Alex Gordon. And Gordon pops one up foul back out of play. He walked his first time up. Sure, sir, walked a pair in that first inning, but pitched around trouble by getting Perez to ground out. So many times I've talked to. Kids, youth baseball, and they've asked me, "What's the mo what's the best pitch?" Of course, it, you know your typical answer would be strike three, <laughs> but it's really strike one. I've never heard strike three. I've heard strike one quite a bit, but strike three is pretty impressive too. <laughs> strike three means you have to throw three pitches. Strike one could be a ground ball to your shortstop. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Gordon waiting on the one two and he swings and strikes out Max is deep. that he is four strikeouts tonight for Max Scherzer a one two three third
brought to you by Arby's. We have the meats. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Don't forget the Tigers' wives auction is going on right now. Make a phone call at 313 471 2100. Bid on one of the great baskets that all the Tigers players have. And again, for more information on each of the baskets that are available for bidding tonight, it's tigers.com slash wives. For more information. Tigers trying to build on their 3 nothing lead now as we go to the bottom of the third inning. J.D. Martinez leads it off and Nick Castellanos and Alex Avila. Second consecutive batter that uh, Vargas has started off with that breaking ball at 75 miles per hour inside. Did the same thing to Victor Martinez in the second inning. Vargas now 12 out of 14 in first pitch strikes. Breaking yeah. ball inside, change up fading down and away. JD got it for a sack fly back in the first inning, scoring the first run of this game. The 0 2. Did he go? Negative, says James Hoy. JD now with 64 RBIs this year. Here's the 1 2. Got him, strike three. One out. Well, our next batter has a basket. That would be Nick Castellanos that you can bid on. It's the dinner and a movie basket. An autographed bat, batting gloves and cap. P.F. Chang's and iTunes gift card. Four uptown movie passes. Beats by Dre Earbuds, popcorn maker and supplies. And there's some beef jerky in there as well. Courtesy of Nick Castellanos. Real nice basket. P.F. Chang's, they got some good eats there. Uh, yeah. Or as you like to term them, grocery. Yes, sir. <laughs> Owen won the count on Castellanos. Nick batting 263. He struck out in the first inning. One ball, one strike. All of a sudden, this inning, you see Vargas trying to locate that fastball in the middle half in. He got J.D. Martinez. Kind of frozen with the ball down and in. Good pitch. Might be a little late for him tonight, though, Jack. With Max on the mound. Let's hope it is. This is the Vargas that we usually see. The one that's not afraid to throw that fastball inside, even though he tops out at 88, 89 miles an hour. It's a good pitch. Most right handers, they're not looking in there anyway. Well, to me, it just shows the importance. And no matter who you are, you have to locate inner half off the plate sometimes, but. You have to show it no matter what. If you expect to get the ball on the outer half of the plate, and that's where you really want to get most of your outs, you have to show a hitter that you want the inner half, at least show him that you're going to willing to throw it in there. See how easy his outs have become now? The fact that he is starting to use that inside fastball. That's Jason Vargas when he's at best. He threw Cassiano's three fastballs inside, and then he came back with that nice circle change with some nice arm fading action away from the right handed batter. Vargas a pair of strikeouts here in the third. And he has three for the game now. Here's Avila. Base on balls back in the second for Alex. It is in there. A strike on Avila. Three runs, four hits for Detroit. No runs, two hits for KC tonight. Tigers victory, and they pull even in the standings with Kansas City. Here's the 0-1. Pulled and by Hosmer down the right field line. Avila taking the turn, but Aoki will get it back in. You'd love to have the first baseman that has the glove on the right hand, but here's one play where actually it may benefit you from having the glove. On the left hand, one step of the dive for Hosmer. Because he has the glove on the right hand, he can't slow that ball down. But if the glove was on the other hand with his skill set, that's probably a play that he makes. Tigers have another hit on the board. He's going to bring up Romine. Andrew is 0 for 1. So, what you're saying, Rod, is you want an ambidextrous first baseman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can bring two gloves out there. I'm not sure that's legal. In reality, you want the guy that throws uh, with the left hand because you can throw the bases a little bit easier as Hosmer does throw left handed. 
But that play right there is the one play where you wish you could have a guy down there that bats right handed throws with the right hand. The 0 one. That's a big word you just used there Jack. We don't use words that big. Well, it took me a long time. Hey, come on now. But every once it's, in a while I look for a new one. Where'd you get that? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't stumble with it either. <laughs> one ball one strike. Now the question is can you spell ambidextrous. No uh -oh. Mario but I know that that little card you gave me to repeat three times. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> It's all written down there. One and two, Romine reaching out a fielder's choice and scoring a run back in the third. Tigers have five hits now. The Royals have two. Here's the one two. Two and two the count. He pulled that change up across his body, ended up on the inside part of the plate. That's a dangerous hit, dangerous area for a right hand batter. Popped in the air to shallow right. It's going to be caught by the second baseman in Fonte, and that'll end the inning. No runs a hit, one man left, three in the books. One up on Detroit, five up on Cleveland. Indians doing their best to stick around. They'll be coming to town after the Royals leave. Now Cleveland, of course, made that big charge last year at the end of the year to check in as a wild card. Here's a drive off the bat of Salvador Perez deep into left field, and it's going to be caught right at the wall by JD. All right there, that movement. On his fastball is what really helped that ball right there. He's got a tailing fastball comes in. And we see some of the spin and movement within the strike zone that Max has thrown here tonight. The last one that Perez just hit got in on his hands just enough. Missed the barrel of the bat, and that's why JD Martinez was able to run it down left field. And Max doing a marvelous job of working all four quadrants of the strike zone. That fastball had a little tailing action, which was able to crowd Salvador Perez. Max knows that Salvador is very aggressive with his first pitch swinging. Sixty sixty-three percent fastballs tonight by Max. He's thrown some curves. He's thrown some sliders. He's thrown some changeups. Pulled on the ground to second base. Routine there for Kinsler. And Hosmer is out. 
pitching with a tremendous amount of confidence here tonight. Yeah, more than anything, that he's throwing up there is goose eggs, and that's what you want to see out of your pitchers. Yeah, he has now retired eight consecutive Royals hitters, and Ned Yost has to be wondering here, fellas, in the month of September, the offense really has has scuffled this final month. Well, they just want the Tigers to get out of town, really. They are tired of playing the Tigers. The Tigers have won 10 of the 14 games this year they played against Kansas City for whatever reason. They're very good against everybody else, but they struggle against Detroit. And to me, that's a sign of a young team, a team that hasn't quite got there yet. You've got to take care of your own division, number one. The Tigers have been the perennial team to beat the last few years in the Central. And Kansas City knows that. Detroit seems to still have their number. Max continues to throw that mid 90s fastball right around the belt buckle, which is a difficult pitch to get to. One ball, two strikes. Three of the Royals wins in this series came back in June when they came here to Comerica Park and they won three out of four in that series. Two balls, two strikes. And Josh Willingham singled in his first at bat. Looked like the Royals had something going. They had back to back hits by Hosmer and Willingham. But then Max really got to work. He struck out a pair and then got a ground out. Inning over. Here's the 2 2. Slides outside 3 and 2. Kansas City was looking for a power bat. By and large, they really have not had much power this year. They signed Raul Libanez after he was released this year. They made a deal for Willingham. Willingham, accustomed to playing in big ballparks, hit a lot of home runs in Oakland, hit a lot of home runs in Minnesota. And Kansas City is also a very big ballpark. It'll be a two out walk. Max a little upset with himself right there. He gets two quick outs and then gives Willingham a free pass, the guy that he thinks he can handle. Third walk of the game now for. Max Scherzer. Time now for the Bernstein advantage. And when you look at advantages tonight, well, Scherzer has one over Mike Mustakis, only 137 versus Max. No small sampling either. And 29 at bats for Mustakis against Max. A severe shift on for Mustakis. And a strike on the outer edge. They call him Moose in Kansas City. Still probably really hasn't gotten to the point where they thought he would offensively right. after winning a minor league player of the year a couple of years ago. They're still waiting for him to develop into that guy they expect him to be with the bat in his hand. Pretty good job at third base defensively. They may have to do with him like the Cleveland Indians did to Lonnie Chisholm Hall. They may have to take the position away for just a short time, knowing that Mostakis can handle defense at this level. They know he can hit. He's a former number one draft choice. He was outstanding in the minors. He just hasn't put it together here. But if they find another third baseman to put a little pressure on him, he may wake up. Well, his RBI numbers are up this year from last year. He's knocked in 51, but still the average at 206. Scherzer now at the 02, and it's drilled to right field on a line. Hunter coming over, and he'll run it down right in front of the wall. No runs, a walk, one left.
Detroit fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. There's the hashtag Detroit fan photo. Tweet your photo now. Well, we got a couple of lions, and oh, we got three lions in the house tonight. How about Stafford, Megatron? Looks like it's quite a few lions down there. Reggie Bush. Nice. Let's uh, let's run down there and get our. Uh, I went over to Ford Field yesterday when I left here, and it was a fun time. They're all geared up too in their Tigers gear. The Tigers went over there yesterday and uh, watched some Lions football. Now the uh, Lions returning the favor. Here's Rajay Davis to start things off. Megatron had a big game yesterday, didn't he? He's a great player. He is, man. They all played well yesterday. Rajay, two run shot. Back in the second. That's a different kind of crowd over there, too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It's not real sedate, is it? It is a different kind of crowd over there. <laughs> they only have 16 days to get excited. Man. And Rajay Davis played long ball. He got a fastball about 87 miles an hour that Vargas tried to sneak by him with two strikes. And Rajay they got on top of it for his eighth home run of the year. Davis also picking up RBIs 47-48, extending a one-nothing lead to three to nothing. Vargas now with the 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. That changeup is a much better pitch now for Vargas that he has started to go inside with a few fastballs. He has gotten a few of the Tigers hitters thinking about the fastball inside and he's pulling the string very nicely. It just opens up the outer half of the plate when you show the hitter that you're willing to come in on the plate. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. You know you've got a really good change up when you continue to go to it and he's done it several times here tonight back to back with his change up. And you really can't locate it any better than that because the hitter can see the change up or he can see the four seam spin coming out of the hand. He's thinking it's a fastball. If you leave it up they can make contact but if you bury it the way he's been burying his you can get some swings and misses. Kinsler hammers the ball in the air to shallow left field coming on is Gordon and Alex makes the play two away. Well, I picked in as my player of the game hoping he would come back for an 0 for 5 yesterday but so far 0 for 3 tonight. He's still got a shot. Still got a shot right but yeah. uh, it looks like Jack's leader in the clubhouse now he's got Scherzer right. Yes he does. That's pretty good. Here's Torrey Hunter. A couple of singles for Torrey. Out in front, 0 and 1. Had a long talk with Torrey before the game. Talked a little hitting and his philosophies. One ball, one strike. Well, his philosophies these days at his age, I mean, <laughs> apparently they're still working. He's gotten wiser as he's gotten older. Oh, that's going to get under the glove of Mustakas in the left. Torrey taking a wide turn, but it'll cruise back as Gordon guns it back in. It'll be generous if they give Torrey Hunter a hit. Yeah, I think they have to give him a hit because it wasn't a routine play for the third baseman. See, it goes under the glove. Mustakas is yelling at himself, so he's not happy. It would be generous though if they gave him a hit. Torrey picked up three hits in yesterday's game. This would be the third if they give it to him. Still waiting on the uh, ruling and Hunter hoping to have a three for three. Regardless of what they call that play, uh, Hosmer, who's been really good with the glove, had a couple of miscues yesterday, and that one by Mustakas. Mustakas will be the first to tell you that's a play that uh, he should make. No balls, one strike. A lot of times, third baseman, first baseman, they'll anticipate the ball to come up and it stays down. That one went under his glove. He thought it might have been coming up a little higher. Just so important to always focus till that ball's in your glove. It's an error, E5. 
So no three hit game for Torrey. Two out base runner for the Royals. So one more look at the play by Mustafa. Just that did not get the glove down. The ball hit right off the tip of the glove and was able to get into left field for an air. First air of the ball game tonight for either club. It's the thirteenth air of the season by Mustakis. You know, Mario, I was looking at some numbers before the game today on Kansas City, and I think most people out there agree that this is a very athletic defense. They've got guys that move all over the place. They make a lot of plays, but they come in eleventh of fifteen teams in defense in the American League, and that surprises me. You there know. must be some kind of war stats out there that say that they're better than that. Yeah, I, I, uh, I saw that number two and it did shock me because when you go position by position pretty much they're above average at most positions defensively. I mean their fielding percentage is 983 coming into the game today and that's 11th of the 15th teams. Tigers are 13th but they're not regarded as as good a defensive team as Kansas City. I think what it is is a sample size over the season where you expect the athletic athlete to come out and you know that they can make the outstanding play. Gordon in the left field, Kane in center. Right. You know, those guys can cover some ground, so they make the exceptional play. But then the routine play, like we saw with Hosmer last night and Mustakas here tonight, you know, you get a few of those, they add up, and apparently they're not able to do what the Orioles did for so many years and do what the great feeling Tigers did with Whitaker and Trammell up the middle. Just make all the plays. Yeah. The ones that are supposed to be made, they make. And you don't ever boot the easy ones. And there's tremendous value to that. A soft one hopper hit towards second, turned into a two hopper, and Fonte will get Miggy, and that'll end the inning. Nothing comes of the two out error. Detroit is brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. And by Chevy at Chevy Truck Month, where great deals and great trucks come together at your Chevy dealer. Nice night for baseball here in the Motor City. The Tigers off to a nice lead as well. They're up 3 0. As we go to the top of the fifth inning here at Comerica, Max Scherzer has been down it again tonight. He'll go back to work and he delivers a strike to Lorenzo Kane. Max is able to command all of his pitches here tonight, whether it be that first pitch slider he just threw there to Kane or the fast one in the mid 90s above the belt buckle. Nine of 10 retired by Scherzer, about to make it 10 of 11. He got him by a strike. One away. Let's check back into the Tigers' wives' auction. Here's Justin White. Thanks, Mario. I'm standing here with Christina Avila, wife of Tigers catcher Alex Avila. You know, before we get to his basket, I got to ask you. I was watching you in the first inning when your husband threw out a would-be base dealer. 
you were so focused on the phone call, you yeah. didn't even know what happened. I got it right now. You, you just, oh, yeah. you had no idea. no idea. She is that yeah. locked in <laughs> on what's going on here. Speaking of which, how nice of a thing is this to be with all of the wives and raising money for such a great cause? It is great. When the, when the guys aren't there, our support system at home are the wives and girlfriends of these players. And we get along so great, and it's so nice to be able to have a support system away from home here and it's great when we get together and be able to do this kind of stuff and raise money for a great cause all right let's talk about alex's basket the theme is casting a line we know he loves to fish so fill us in on the details he actually came shopping with me to the store and helped me pick out the stuff because i didn't really know what to get so he was there he picked out everything for by himself so he picked it out yeah. tell us though how good of a fisherman is he he's pretty good yeah he's pretty good he goes a lot in the off season yeah. if it's a nice day outside he's out there all right, so if you would like to bid on Alex Avila's basket or any others, the phone number is 313-471-2100, and maybe you can talk with Christina Avila. Thanks so much for taking the time. Have fun the rest of the night. Thank you very much. Mario, we'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, Justin, thank you again. Uh, bidding ends after the first pitch of the eighth inning tonight, so you still have plenty of time. And you can check out all of the different baskets at tigers.com slash wives. Sure, sir. Missing outside. And the count two and two now on Alcides Escobar. Here's the updated bidding on Alex's basket up to 1500 bucks now. Here's the phone number 313 471 2100. Slice staying over the head of the second baseman Kinsler. One out single for Alcides Escobar. Escobar doing a good job with his hands right there. His lower half was kind of already gone, but his focus was good. He threw the hands, got the bat head on the ball, barreled it up, and hit it out to right field. You see his head focused with his eyes. Royals have just picked up their third hit of the game. That has been it. As Nori Aoki stands in. And Scherzer hits the outside corner 0 1. You know, the one big difference, I think, guys, that people talk about when looking at the Royals and Tigers, they say the Tigers are the more veteran team, the Royals are the younger, more athletic team. Would you rather have down the stretch the young legs or the or the veteran guys? I'd rather have pitchers. <laughs> you want to win postseason, you better have pitchers. <laughs> None of the above, huh? There's a base hit to right field. That'll move the runner up. I think they both play well if both teams are fortunate enough to get to the postseason, which could very easily be the case. Uh, starting pitching and power pitching usually get you deep into the postseason, but because games are so highly contested, Guys that can run, teams that are multi dimensional, teams that can steal a base, and the Royals could fall into that category with a tremendous bullpen. Both teams could be very difficult to beat if they get into the postseason. That's just it. The, the, the difference between the two teams, the Tigers have the history of the dominant starting pitchers. We saw David Price down there, done a great job for the Tigers. But the Royals, on the other hand, have that real great. Bullpen, so you get to the fifth inning, and Ned Yost has options that the Tigers don't have. And they also have the ability to steal a base very late in the game. They disrupt the timing of a pitcher, or they put the catcher on high alert. They make the manager do things he normally wouldn't do, as in pitching out and things like that. One of their better base dealers, Draw Dyson, he hasn't even played in the game here in this series. But they do have some team speed. Fonte backs out of there one ball one strike. Problem is for the Royals here in the month of September they put so much pressure on their starting pitching because their offense just has not been able to give them any early offense to work with. Well, Rod hit it on the head early. You keep that speed off the base pass. It you know speed's only good if they're on the base path. They, I mean they can't run when they're sitting in the dugout. Can't steal first. <laughs> Here's the one one. Slice to center field. Here comes Rajay Davis. Going to drop in. Base hit. We'll get by Davis as well. It's a score a run. It's a mistake by Rajay Davis in center field off the base hit of Omar Infante. What he was trying to do was to deke the base runner into thinking that he was going to catch the ball, the runner on second base. 
And then by him doing that, the ball took a tricky hop on him. Torrey Hunter had to bail him out. So and it's a mistake by Rajay. Three to one ball game. Royals get their first run. And they're in business now with the tying runs on and only one out. Back to back weak hits off of Max Scherzer, but they go down as hits in an RBI right there for Omar Infante. And now Scherzer has to deal with the middle of the lineup for the Royals. And Gordon is the one guy that uh, has done well against Max. Gordon looks at a strike on the outer end. Last time he carved Gordon up nicely with change up, a breaking ball, and he finished him off with a fastball in the mid 90s. I mean, that Gordon did not, well, he kind of swung at it, but he didn't swing at it. Check swing. Outside, one ball, one strike. We talked about it with Justin Verlander yesterday. And where the dominant pitchers can really shine. This is a situation in the game where Max Scherzer really needs to get an out. He's got a very good hitter in Alex Gordon up, first and third, one run in already. Closer ball game now that the one run scored. To leave Leoki at third would be great. Uh oh, drill deep to right field down the line. That ball is hooking and it is foul. Gordon finally sat on one of those real soft breaking balls and he sat as long as he could. And then he uncoiled, but the ball appeared to go foul. He hung that thing out of T and Max thought it was gone. But he got new life. Woo. <laughs> oh, do I know that feeling well? <laughs> now, that ball clearly foul, but Ned Yost is going to. Uh, by some time to see what his still have a conversation with James Hoy, who is the first base umpire. Waiting for his video of the guy to show him what we just saw, the ball being foul. Well foul. Well that's got to go out here at least to uh, have his video guy give him time to take a look at it, but it's clearly foul. And apparently whatever he said to uh of the first base umpire, he's going to get the other umpires to huddle to see if there's cause uh, to go to the instant replay and take a peek at it. You can't request a replay on home run balls. It has to be the umpire's decision to want to do that. Well, the, the second base umpire and the third base base umpire really, unless you're the crew chief, have no business being in the discussion. Well, they just have to see if anybody had a better look. Yeah, and they don't. I mean, the only guys that have a look are the guys looking right down the line. The home plate umpire, Eric Cooper, and James Hoy, the first base umpire. So they're going to take a look at it. No, maybe no. not. They're waving him back. Now they're calling Ned out. The umpire is probably going to decide here. Look, we had a really good look. And it's clearly foul. So no need to take a look at it. And it gives Max Scherzer a chance now to. Get that out. It could have been a game changer right there would have put the Royals in front had it been fair. And Kansas City Royals uh, they feel like it was close enough to take a look at. It. One and two on Alex Gordon. Bounce in and away, but Avila will keep it in front of him. With instant replay now as part of the game, the way it is, you just don't see the classic arguments between managers and umpires that you once saw. And I think umpire managers have determined that there's still some jockeying to be had for Ned Yost. He probably saw that that ball was foul, but you know why not go out there and at least let him know that maybe. We need to break down the road too. And they could be uh, playing mind games with sure. Max Scherzer. Trying to slow him down, disrupt his time, and get him out of his game. 
Now the count's gone full three and two. Well, that's definitely a good point too. You, you stall a little bit. That pitcher has to stand around. He doesn't get pitches to stay hot and stay in his rhythm. It's a dangerous uh, decision here and a dangerous call by Ned Yost to send Omar and Fontan the three two pitch. Especially with Salvador Perez in the batter's box in the on deck circle I should say. Runners going and it's a walk to load the bases. So now it's becoming really tricky in this inning. Three hits and a walk Jeff Jones making his way out to the mound. Fourth walk for Max Scherzer. Jones he's going to walk out there and just buy him some time. Wants to get on the same page with Alex Avila and how they want to pitch Salvador Perez here. No place to put him. I want to take one more look at this base hit off the bat of Infante in the center field with Ielke running from first base. And we told you Davis came in, he dig like he was going to catch the ball, even though he wasn't. But what I want to do is I want to give some credit to Torrey. And look at Ielke. See, he's going to stop if Rajay catches that on one bounce, I think. But when the ball gets past Rajay, he simply goes to third base. Rajay was not given an air on that play. But what's very important here is Torrey Hunter starting to move in that direction. Then that ball gets past Rajay, he's able to get to it uh, to get the ball back in. Here is Salvador Perez. Bases are loaded for the Royals. He drills one foul and it almost hits Aoki down there at third. It's a nice teaching tool for all you baseball players out there. Every time the ball is hit somewhere on the baseball field, you as a defender, you've got somewhere to be, you've got somewhere to go, somebody to back up. There are the base runners, Aoki and Fonte Gordon. Max was cruising along, wasn't he? Three hits and a walk this inning. Scherzer's still throwing first pitch strikes 15 of his last 16. The one thing that we did tell you the other day, and it's worth mentioning again, Salvador Perez is grounded into 21 double plays this year. That's a lot. 21 of them. He's already hit a ball to the shortstop in this game tonight. 0 for 2. Tap foul. He's in the hole in the count now. 0 and 2. And Max should be the kind of pitcher I think he's very aware, of, uh, very well aware of the fact that Perez can hit in some double plays. You got to throw a pitch that you think he can hit on the ground. Pound it on the ground. But I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Do you want the strikeout here or do you want the ground ball here? I mean, I'll take the all. ground ball. I want two outs with two strikes. With two strikes. Now time called. Avila had flashed the signals. He's going to run out to the mound. Hosmer got a base hit on a fastball. Two hits yesterday. Three hits yesterday. Yeah, or three hits yesterday. You don't. You don't feel too comfortable pitching to the left hander. You got a right hander here that you think you can handle. Got good movement with your fastball on both sides of the plate. Little cutter, slider, whatever it is that Max throws on the outer half, and that moving fastball inside. And that's pulled to the third baseman on a line, throw to second safe. I don't know if Cassianos didn't have a good handle on that line drive, but he simply lobbed it to Kinsler instead of really giving him a good firm throw. We'll have to take another look at it, but see the just lobbed it over there. Maybe he was trying to lead Kendra to the back, but it wasn't that really good firm throw by Nick. It may have been the case where he didn't want to hit the base runner in the back either. Kinsler was directly behind him. And if he doesn't give him some kind of glove on either side of the base runner, you tend to just soft toss it down there. So they're loaded up now with two outs. Here is Hosmer, single ground out. Three to one Tigers have the lead and a bouncing ball foul down the first baseline down toward Rusty Coombs outstanding first base coach really good outfield coach as well for the Kansas City Royals former Tiger former teammate of ours Rod. Yep, one of the best men yeah. in the game never changes just always solid yeah. solid individual very positive guy. Here 
Here's the 0 1. Another good block by Avila, who's had to do that a couple of times to keep Aoki at third base. One ball, one strike. I mean, the rally started with a single by Escobar, then a base hit by Aoki. Infante singled in a run and put the Royals on board. And Max trying to leave him loaded here in the fifth. Osmer winning on a 1 1. They get 1 and 2. Crunch time right here for a pitcher. You're, you're doing two things. You realize that he's a good fastball hitter, especially out over the plate. And you're trying to figure out, and it's something you have to read and almost have a sixth sense about, is how aggressive does he want to be here? He certainly wants to get a hit. He wants to be the hero. Can you get away with the off speed pitch away? You throw the breaking ball out of the zone and hope that he chases, or do you run the fastball up? Like Verlander tried to do yesterday. High and outside, two and two. Best fastball of the night and thrown by Matt Scherzer. 97 miles an hour registered on the radar gun. Well, he tried to go up to see if Hosmer would swing out of the zone. At 97, you can go over the heart of the dish and yeah. maybe throw it right by him. Certainly go up middle half. That's pretty good velo. Crucial pitch right here. This can control your destiny if you're Max Scherzer. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Hosmer down on strikes. The Royals will get a run on the RBI hit by Infante, but Scherzer strikes him out, and Max fired up. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire. Done. He leaves the bases loaded. Struck out Hosmer. It's still three to one ball game. And here is the Max Scherzer basket. Bit by the travel bug basket. Autographed All Star Game jersey, glove, bobblehead, photo, and baseball card. One hundred dollar Capital Grill gift card. Ten bucks for Dunkin' Donuts. And a whole lot of stuff. Wireless speaker, iPod, Nano, iPhone, 4s, 4s case. And a whole lot of stuff in there. The Max Scherzer bit by the travel bug basket. That's a nice basket. Don't forget the goldfish crackers. 
How about uh, 2200 bucks right now for Max's basket. How about that 97 mile per hour fastball that he dusted Eric Hosmer with too. There's a strike on the outer edge to Victor Martinez. It's nice to have 97 in your back pocket. <laughs> I wouldn't know but I'd love to have it. <laughs> Well, he painted it. It was location that was just as important as his velocity. And he dotted that glove of Alex Avila on the outer half. Pulled right at the third baseman, Mustakis, one out. Victor is 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. So Vargas was hoping his teammates could uh, get him back into this thing. They scratched across the run but left him loaded. Here is J.D. Martinez. JD knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly in the first inning. JD looks at the ball outside 1 0. And meanwhile, Jason Vargas has settled in very nicely after giving up that two run home run to Rajay Davis in the second inning. With one minor adjustment at fastball right there. And that is number 20 for JD. Well, we'll get to see this one again. Another mistake pitched by Vargas, and JD doesn't miss it. The pitch fastball. See the glove of Perez. He didn't miss that one. Yeah, Perez wanted that ball inside, and that's the reason why Vargas had been so good the last couple of innings, but that one leaked back over the plate. Tigers now lead it four to one. Nick Castellanos the hitter. Game of momentum and Vargas had a chance there to help his team gain a little momentum. Had a good inning against Max Scherzer, even though Max pumped it up there to get out the final out. Got back in the ball game, and all of a sudden you give up that run again, and now it's a three-run lead for the Tigers. Castiano says struck out a couple of times in this ball game, 0 for 2. And now all for three on uh, three strikeouts. Two gone. Fifth strikeout. Fastball that stayed in that time. Located it well. Avila now with two outs. Single and a walk. First time he started Avila off with the breaking ball here tonight. The previous two at bats, he started Avila off with fastballs. Oh, and two now on Avila. Vila now is 333 versus Vargas and overall 206 against left handed pitching. So, for whatever reason, he's had Vargas' number. A couple of home runs against him as well. If you look at Vargas' splits, left handers and right handers, left handers a slight edge as far as the batting average against him, but more power against Vargas off the right handed bats.
And the reason for that is Vargas very seldom will throw his change up to the left handed batter. Although he has done quite a bit of that tonight against Avila. A little harder for a pitcher to finish his change up off. On the non glove hand side for him. It's easy to go. Throwing hand side away from a right hander, but he has to cross his body and still finish it off. Change up being a tough pitch to locate down and away, but that's the only spot for it. Here's the 2 2 from Vargas. Swing and a miss. He got him that time. Six strikeouts now for the Royals lefty J.D. Martinez goes deep Tigers have extended their lead. Biggest sequence of the night by Max Scherzer with two outs. Eric Hosmer very dangerous and Hunt's first pitch fastballs. Max threw him three straight changeups before he started throwing fastballs. First fastball up in the strike zone at 97. Then he comes back with another 97 mile per hour fastball. And you cannot locate a pitch in that high velocity in better location than Max did, and he was fired up when he strolled off the mound. Yeah, you can see that I think Hosmer thought he was going to come back in. He kind of opened up a little bit and he painted away. And just throws him there. Nothing he could do, just throw his hands at the ball. Scherzer back out there in the sixth inning, enjoying a three run lead now. It'll be Willingham, Mustakis, and Kane facing the Tigers' right hander. Walking a single tonight for Willingham, who swings right through a 91 mile an hour fastball. 0 oh and 2. One and two, the count. Five punch outs tonight for Max. He's had four base on balls, though. Bounce in, run the count even two and two. Mustakis on deck. Four to one Tigers lead, trying to draw even in the Central Division standings with a win tonight. Gold foul. Just before this inning started. How about Miggy? Is he trying to hit Megatron? I guess he's doing his best, Matt Stafford. <laughs> Miggy played some volleyball along with baseball as a kid. I'm not sure he was a QB. 
Touchdown to Megatron though. Here's the 2 2 and it's fouled back out of play. The Twins may have done Josh Willingham a favor. They pretty much realized they weren't going to re-sign him and they were able to move him to a contending team. Give Josh a chance maybe at postseason baseball. So much Jack was made about how small or how small how big that ballpark is in Minnesota and how tough it is to hit home runs but Willingham he kind of made it look small didn't he? Well the first couple of years and, and I'm a big believer in concrete dry and I know there's no physical laws that say it does but the balls didn't carry quite as well but the twins also didn't have a lot of power hitters in those first couple of years now the balls are carrying and any legitimate home run hitter can hit it out whether it's left field right field even in the power alleys balls starting to carry a target field two and two the count stays on Willingham most of Willingham's home runs though are always towards the left field Rarely does he shoot the ball the other way. He's a dead pull hitter. Yeah, his spray chart would back you up on that. High pop up, shallow left field. Coming in is Martinez. Still coming in. One gone. Here's our high speed pitch, and it's brought to you by Xfinity. Uh, Max, best fastball of the evening. Actually, he threw two of them back to back. It was last half inning to Eric Hosmer, uh, their first baseman. Both of those registered in the upper 90s. Good time to have your best fastball with bases loaded and two outs. The batting average against Max this year is about 190 with two outs and runners in scoring position. So uh, he does his best work finishing off innings when he's pitching in a little stress. The Stockis looks at a ball outside evens the count now one ball one strike. Fly ball strikeout for the third baseman of the Royals. 11 of his 15 homers this year have come within the division. Well, be driven back up the middle, soft grounder into center field. It's a one out single, his first hit of the night. To the studio we go. Game break time now for Matt Shepard. All right, Shep, thank you. Those Yankees came in five back in the wild card standings. Oakland trying to come back to the pack now. They have really struggled. Yeah, Matt Shepard working hard today. He was down at the ballpark today compiling some information. Taking that back to the call, Sam Studio. One strike on Lorenzo Kane. Go Tigers! Mario! Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks for all the hair. Appreciate it. <laughs> really, now I have a little bit on top. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. You're from St. Clair Shores. We appreciate it. And Rod's glasses are rarely ever yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you got the cool breeze tie on, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, it is. No balls, two strikes on Lorenzo Cain. Scherzer now 94 pitches in this game. Max expending a lot of energy getting through that fifth inning and leaving the bases loaded, allowing just the one run. The Royals have been very fortunate this year keeping Lorenzo Kane healthy. He has spent a lot of time on the disabled list since they acquired him from the Milwaukee Brewers in that Zach Grinke deal. Now he's going right back to that slider with Kane. Great movement here. Started basically starts it off the plate and continues to run. 
Something else that Max has started to do a lot of the last couple of years is he's changing speeds on his breaking ball. He threw Kane a slider earlier tonight when he struck him out. The velocity was a little bit higher than that one. That was a little slow breaking ball. Two outs for Escobar. Bender drops in 0 1. It's a battle locker there. Locked him up. Each club with six hits in this game. The Tigers have made better use of theirs. They've had a home run from Rajay Davis. Two run shot on the second. JD is also a homer to this contest. Here's the 0 1. 0 2. Rod talked about the fifth inning for Max Scherzer being a high stress inning and the pitch count climbed quite considerably. He's approaching that 100 pitch limit that a lot of pitchers have. Certainly it's going to be a concern for Brad Osmus is how far do you let this guy go. You've got a, a nice three run lead here but you want to go to the bullpen for three innings. That's in the air to shallow right field. And Torrey Hunter is under it to retire the side. No runs to hit, and one man left. Sixth inning. How about the uh, Tigers' wives' auction tonight? Here's the Brad Ausmus Surfs Up basket. Includes, among other things, autographed Brad Ausmus jersey, baseball card, and limited edition surfing Brad Ausmus bobblehead. That's really cool. Puzzle book, Tigers beach towel, MLB sunglasses. So if you're heading out to the beach, bringing a Brad Ausmus along with you and uh, bid on his Surfs Up basket. The uh, wives are at the phone banks right now, taking your calls. They will do so. Bidding ends until uh, after the first pitch of the eighth inning. That's when the bidding will end. First pitch after the eighth inning. So all of the funds will go to the uh, great charity here, the Detroit Tigers Foundation. Right Aaron Crow throwing in the Royal bullpen right now. Yeah, I just again am reminded how much the game has been changed. First of all, in our era. There was no player basket auctions, which is unfortunate, but I'm trying to visualize Sparky Anderson with a surfs up basket. <laughs> you know, he's a California guy. He's a Cali guy. guy. He's a Cali guy. Imagine Sparky out there on the surf kit <laughs> hanging 10. Here's a bouncer to the shortstop. Escobar will throw out Romine, one gone. Him and his running buddy, Billy Consolo. <laughs> I well, can see Consolo trying it. <laughs> what would be in the Jack Morris basket? 
Well, I'd have to try to top Alex Avila's vision. Oh, yeah. Get maybe have a free day of fishing out on Lake St. Clair with one of the musky guys. Nice. Why not? Rajay, two run homer in this ball game. Big knock early in the game, made it 3 0 in favor of Detroit. Each ball club with six hits and it's bounced back up the middle and is booted by Omar and Fonte. Boy, the Royals are just not playing much defense in this series. The speed of Rajay Davis there caused Omar and Fonte to charge that ball more aggressively than he normally would off the bat of most right handers. And because he charges so aggressively, he didn't play the ball correctly. He didn't keep the glove down and he makes a miscue at second. And those are the routine ones we talked about. You've got to make that. Those are the ones you're supposed to have no problem, even with the speed of Rajay Davis. Ned Yost now he's going to make a pitch and change with the Aaron Crow. Wall side windows, pitching change. Crow will come in to face Kinsler. And we'll be back. Sixth inning, Jack was recently talking about things that have changed in the game of baseball. How about this, Jack? Complete games. Guys going deep into games like this guy back in October of 1991. Remember this? Well, I'm never going to forget that one. <laughs> that was uh, probably the crowning moment of my life. All the good years in Detroit, but yeah. That was a pretty good movie. I, had that was a, I learned that from Max Scherzer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a moment for you, Jack. Meanwhile, Aaron Crow now is taking over for the KC Royals. 62nd game this year for Aaron Crow. He checks in with a 3.71 ERA. He's got a fastball that will top out at about 96, 97. Average fastball 94. He's got a slider. He also has a changeup, but primarily just those two pitches. Fastball slider. Yeah, he's another one of those great arms that came through the Royal organization. Back in the years that the Royals really struggled, they were getting first and second round draft choices year in and year out. Crow was one of those guys out of the University of Missouri. So Kinsler will bat now. The Tigers up four to one. We're in the sixth after an air by Infante. Ooh, bad pickoff throw there by Crow, and he got bailed out by Hosmer. Ian Kinsler also spent a year at the University of Missouri after transferring from Arizona State. This should be fun. Rajay Davis running. Perez the catcher throwing. Perez may be the best throwing catcher. Well, he probably is the best throwing catcher in the American League. Outstanding release, very quick. Yeah, he's probably 
going to surpass Yadier Molina as the game's best catcher. You know that that argument will be for a while whether you're a Cardinal fan or <laughs> Kansas City. It's that uh, Central America rivalry. Who our guy's better than your guy, but that young man right there has really made an impact in a short time here at the big league level. That last fastball by Crow was about 94 miles an hour upstairs. It was almost like a pitch out if Rajay was running. One and two on Kinsler. He and his hope for three in the game fly balls in the first and fourth. He bounced out in the second. So many things have changed now. You've got your first base coaches out there every time with stopwatches and their timing. The time they slide step. How long does it take a pitcher to get rid of the ball? That can determine whether the manager sends him or not. Kinsler pops this one up in a shallow left. Gordon coming in. Two gone. Let's take a look at uh, Perez and his very quick release, and it's one of the reasons why Rajay Dave is still standing at first base. He throws from one knee, but he throws very accurately, and the infielders are always aware of the fact that he throws behind the runners all the time. He's got a big body, but he's very athletic behind the plate, and he's got a gun for a throwing arm. What I love about Perez is for as big a guy as he is, he looks like he's got a little league catching glove. And he makes that glove look small. It gives a pitcher a target to throw at, and he holds it steady. A lot of catchers will move late. They feel like they have to make sure that a hitter isn't peaking. They're worried that if I set up too early, a, a hitter that peaks a little bit might see my location, whether it's in or out. And Perez is not a guy to worry about those things. And I appreciate that. Pitchers can handle that themselves. They see a guy peeking, they just cross up their catcher and drill the guy. That'll stop the peaking. But Perez will give up an early target. And he sits still. Saw the particulars on Perez there, 6'3, 245. He's a big guy. I mean, you threw to a pretty big guy yourself, Lance Perry. Yep. Big wheel saved me a lot of ball games. He blocked the ball. I threw that fork ball in the dirt so many times on purpose, trying to get a hitter to chase. And I depended on my catcher to knock that ball down. Lance did a great job. He got beat up so many times. Ooh, they got him that time. Davis picked off first base. And here comes Brad Osmus. Rache called out by first base umpire James Hoy. Yeah, Brad going to stroll out very casually, and then he's going to and go to a mini trot to go over and talk to the first base umpire just to take a look back to the dugout to see whether he should challenge it or not. Very quick move here by Aaron Crow and Rajay Davis was running but how about the pick by Hosmer it looks like he's clearly out. Well the ball beat him the question is yeah. did Hosmer get his glove on Rajay. It looked like he tagged him on the shoulder but we'll get a, a really good look here and an answer from the umpire. The angle, the one that we just saw, a little tough to pick it up. Maybe a different angle with all the cameras in the ballpark. Rajay taking a look at it now on the big board here at the ballpark. All depends on whether or not. Hosmer was able to get that glove down. The, the ball clearly beat him there. Oh, yeah. It was a swipe tag. I don't know that he actually tagged him, Jack. No, I think I think Brad's gonna win this argument. But all the times that I've been guessing over the summer, and it's gonna be an interesting year in the off season to see if they change this at all. Nifty glove work there by Eric Hosmer just to pick that ball out of the dirt and attempt to apply the tag to Rajay. They're calling him out. So after the replay, Davis is picked off. And that'll be it here in the sixth inning. Davis says, wow.
The seventh end with more in the Tigers' wives auction, Justin White. Hey, Mario, we're still going strong down here, and I'm pleased to be joined now by Ana Sanchez, wife of Anibal Sanchez. You and the other wives have been down here all night answering the phones, taking donations, taking bids on these great baskets. What's it been like tonight? It's been a great experience. It's my first time doing it. I know that we've been bombarded with calls, so please keep calling. It's, it's been a great night. Now, when people call up, how excited are they to be talking to the wife of a Detroit Tigers player? They get very excited. They ask us questions as to who we are, and especially for me, how is my husband doing? So we feel very supported by everybody. All right, as for your husband's basket, the theme is grilling, grilling up a good time. Fill us in on the details here. Yes, we do have a grilling theme. Uh, he loves the to grill with friends and family. So we have, besides the autograph baseball and glove and cleats, we have certain items that will help you do the whole perfect grilling. So, so here's the real question. How good of a cook is Anibal? Um, I should say he's an amazing so, but the truth may be somewhere else. I don't know. He's probably watching, so I should say, yes, he's an amazing cook. That's a good wife. Anna, thanks so much for your time, and thanks for all you're doing here Thank tonight. You. Thank you. We'll be here until the first pitch of the eighth inning. Mario, Rod, and Jack will send it back upstairs to you for now. All right, Justin, thanks. You know, I, I got to admit here, Anna didn't say that with much conviction about his uh, cooking skills. Very politically correct, though. <laughs> she could run for some office here. The uh, bidding has gotten up to $1,000 for Anibal Sanchez's basket. And again, uh, as Justin just said, bidding ends after the first pitch of the eighth inning. One ball, two strikes. On the leadoff man, Nori Aoki, who starts things off here. Aoki and Fonte Gordon. Tigers four runs, six hits, and the Royals one run, six hits. Max ready with the one two. Oki in the ball game tonight, single and a walk. Well, right now the Royals would love to have a Aoki just work the count. Pitch count at 103 for Max. And got two guys right there, Albuquerque and Hardy warming up for the Tigers. Another one sprayed back out of play. Max can give you. About 120, 125 on any given night. He's really only pitched in stress in that one inning, and that was the inning that they scored their run back in the fifth inning. Tigers three innings away from pulling into a first place tie with the Royals. They can hang on to this one tonight. Here's the one two. Two balls, two strikes on Nori Aoki. Scherzer really has had only one inning tonight in which he's been challenged. The Tigers, or the Royals rather, got a run on the RBI single by Infante in the fifth. They loaded the bases, but two outs. He got Perez and Hosmer. And they left him loaded. That is fouled off, and he barely stays alive. Max threw 124 pitches to his last outing against the Cleveland Indians, so they might watch him. A little bit closer here tonight. He's now up to 106. And those 124, those were in just uh, six innings against the tribe. Sliced foul again. I hope he's got a little Ichiro Suzuki in him, just trying to foul off anything and everything until. Uh, Max gives him something that he can handle trying to hit it on the ground and run. 23 infield singles already this year by Aoki, uh, their leadoff hitter. This will be the 10th pitch in this bat. With Chopper. Scherzer off the mound, got to hurry. And he got him by a step. Critical first out of the inning. Max bounces off the mound like a good athlete. Aoki making a bid for his 24th infield hit. Max able to shuffle that ball along to Victor Martinez just before Aoki's right foot touches the bag. It's a nice job there by Avila going out after 
a 10 pitch at bat to Ioki and then Max having to come off the mound aggressively and make a play. Avila simply took a stroll out to the mound to allow Max to catch his breath and before he goes after Omar Infante. are very close to the 200 inning mark as we speak right now. It came coming into tonight's game at 193.2 innings. So he's a guy that should be able to throw, including postseason in the 240, 250 range. Certainly an important year for him. He's behind in the count here, 2 0 on Infante. Omar backs out, takes ball three high. Infante had the RBI single against Max in the fifth inning, the only run the Royals have scored so far. He'll take a 3 0 on the inside part of the plate, 3 and 1. Ponte, former Tiger, two stints with the Tigers, broke into the big leagues with Detroit, and that was back in 2002. Then his second stint began after the trade that brought him over with Hannibal Sanchez in 2012. Drill to left field, that's going to be a base hit. One out single for Infante, his second hit of the game. Brad Ausmus and consult with Jeff Jones as pitching coach. And again, Max now going through the teeth of the KC lineup here. Gordon has walked a couple of times. He's also struck out. One and oh, did not go. So says Paul Emil. Both pitchers ready to go in case their phone starts ringing down the bullpen. One ball, one strike. Osmus would love to see a ground ball double play right here. Runner goes. Foul straight back. They had Infante on the move. Ned Yost trying to make something happen. I don't know if that was a hit and run or a run and hit. Well, in either case, they had Omar Infante off and running. They run a lot. 133 steals this year for the Kansas City Royals. Max has reached the 120 plateau twice. That last start, and then also a start earlier in August against Pittsburgh. Fly ball hit well to left field. JD is on the move. He's going to get there in front of the track. Two gone. And then Infante retreats. It's going to bring out Max, or it's going to bring out uh, Brad Osmus, apparently, to get Max Scherzer. One hundred eighteen pitches into this game. Looks like Max is done for the night. He'll get a nice round of applause from these Tiger fans here tonight. Brad hasn't indicated anything yet. He's going to talk it over with Max. See if he's got anything left in the tank to maybe get Perez. But ultimately, he says no. Nope, that's enough. So he's going to want Albuquerque as Max walks off in a wall side windows pitching change.
fastball right by Hosmer. Max, he strolled off the mound, fired up. There's the line for Max tonight. 117 pitches, six and two thirds innings. And he does have an inherited runner at first base. Here is Al Albuquerque coming out of the bullpen. He'll face Salvador Perez. Two outs, a runner aboard here in the seventh. Tigers lead four to one. Popped him up foul. Heading back to the seats out of play. Norm Cash fan could not hang on to that foul ball. Rule number 25 of Norm Cash, that fan who's wearing uh, Cash's jersey. Perez 0 for 3. Hardy joined by Java Chamberlain now in the Detroit bullpen. Al Albuquerque with just uh, two pitches. Those of you that uh, have watched Tigers baseball the last number of years, you know that. He's got the legitimate swing and miss slider. That's the pitch that he will feature 65% of the time, but he also has a 95 mile power fastball to go along with that slider. September rolls around and rosters are able to be expanded. Tigers bring in a pile of minor league pitchers to come up and help out in the bullpen and yet when you're in a pennant race you go to your go to guys Chamberlain up Albuquerque pitching right now. That's a stolen base for Infante. It'll be his ninth of the year he's in scoring position now. Yeah, that's one thing that Al does not do a good job of and that's when that runner is on first base. Uh, very seldom does he been able to stop them from stealing the guys that can run. It's a nice job of exchanging the ball to the throwing hand by Avila on an elevated fastball to make that play close. Nifty glove work by Ian Kinsler picking that ball too out of the dirt. It's a good slide by Omar. One ball, one strike on Salvador Perez. Popped him up, middle of the infield. Albuquerque gets it done. No runs, one hit, one man left in the scoring position. Coming up the help plus seventh inning stretch. In the Tigers' wives' auction, we'll start with Darnell Cole's football night basket. 
It includes an autographed jersey, baseball, and photo, a $50 Kroger gift card. Uncommon, the book by Tony Dungy, and some tailgate essentials. Also, Don Kelly has a roaring tailgate basket, autographed game used bat, baseball, and photo, and two tickets to the November 9th Lions Dolphins game in section 112. That's part of his basket, which also includes the $50 Omaha Steaks gift card. So those are a couple of really cool baskets to bid on. And again, the phone number is 313 471 2100. All the proceeds go towards the Detroit Tigers Foundation. Torrey Hunter starting things off now. And he skies one in the air left side of the infield. Escobar calling for it. And Hunter is out of there, one gone in the seventh. So Crow has come on, he's retired the first two he's face. He's going to bring up Cabrera. He's been on base twice tonight, double and a walk. He's also bounced out. Eleven consecutive years of driving in at least 100 runs. Mickey has 101 for the year. Ball low from Chrome. Side. Two balls, no strikes. You have a reputation like Miguel Cabrera has, one of the perennial great hitters in the game in any generation. You find that a lot of younger pitchers will try to do too much against a great hitter, and they get themselves in trouble because of it. By too much, do you think, uh, or you do you mean throwing a little yeah, bit harder? They're, they're overthrowing, or they're trying to make a breaking ball do too much instead of just trusting their stuff and letting it do its thing. You get behind a hitter like Miguel Cabrera, and that's what makes him such a great hitter. Because you put him in a situation that he can keyhole a hit, a pitch in a certain location. The 2-1. 3-1. Victor Martinez waiting on deck. Foul away. Three and two on Cabrera. It's a three one fastball there at 92 miles per hour that Aaron Crow challenged uh, Miggy with, and Miggy couldn't catch up to it. With the 3 2, but Miggy calls time. One out here in the seventh. Tigers lead 4 to 1. They've been leading all night. Drilled on a line to right field. Aoki. Whoa. That was not easy. Two up, two down. Ball was scalded by Miggy. A couple more baskets want to get to the Ian Kinsler for the love of golf basket autographed game used gloves game used cleats bats in a photo Tigers golf bag as well golf head covers and umbrella and golf, some golf balls included in that basket How about the Joe Nathan fun and games basket it's autographed cleats Jersey and photo Jenga left center right dice game Tigers barbecue set poker chips golf balls as well so uh, a couple of other baskets for you to consider. 313 471 2100. The wives are still there taking your phone calls. Still working busily. Bids or bidding will end after the first pitch of the eighth inning. So we're, we're getting there. It's a strike call. You're running out of time, to be honest with you. So if you're thinking about bidding, get on the phone right now. And again, all the proceeds go towards the Detroit Tigers Foundation.
No balls, one strike. Missed low, one and one the count. And the first at bat of the evening for Victor Martinez, batting left handed. And prior at bats against Vargas, obviously all right handed for Victor. Still trying to work himself into a hitter's count. He's hitless in tonight's game, 0 for 2 with a walk. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here. Crow challenged Miguel Cabrera with a 3 1 fastball. Then Crow came back with a 3 2 fastball that Miggy, that Miggy absolutely scalded the right field for an out. 2 and 2. And didn't challenge Victor there. He threw Victor an off speed pitch. Uh, Victor is trying to win a batting title. Here are the uh, updated numbers. Altuve right now leads over Victor 338 to 336. Altuve in Seattle tonight to take on the Seattle Mariners. The 2 2 high fly ball. Shallow right field. Aoki coming in. Drifting. And finally falls into his glove. A 1 2 3 seventh inning. Let's go to the eighth. The game tweet your photo to hashtag Detroit fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Well, the wives are still working. Time's running out, though. Bidding ends after the first pitch of this eighth inning. So get in quickly. Make your phone calls and bid in the Tigers wives auction here tonight. 313-471-2100. By the way, a tip of the cap as well to the director of the Tigers Foundation. Jordan Field has done a great job in uh, putting this whole event together, does it every single season, and really does outstanding work in the Detroit Tigers Foundation. So your time is running short. Make your final bids. Here is Eric Hosmer. Hosmer one for three, looks at a ball high as the eighth inning is underway with Blaine Hardy on the hill. And Blaine Hardy has uh, pitched very good since coming up from the minor leagues. He's pitched in 32 games prior to tonight. The ERA sits at 2. 28 strikeouts, 16 base on balls, and done pretty nice work against left handers. He has become that uh, late inning left hander for Brad Osmus, even though Phil Koch has been really good down there since about June 1st. He's gone 3-0 now on Hosmer. 
Max Scherzer was lifted with two outs in the seventh. Albuquerque got a pop up to get out of that frame. Willingham waiting on deck. That's in there. And you just don't want to wake up a sleeping dog by walking the leadoff man in late innings. Hardy needs to come back here and figure out something. Even a base hit. In my eyes is better than walking a guy. This will be the only batter more than likely that Hardy sees in this inning. And he's walked him. And more than likely uh, Ned Yost might just pinch hit for Josh Willingham. He's got a lot of left handers at his disposal on his bench. Hardy walks the leadoff man which means Java Chamberlain will be coming in. We'll step aside another pitching change here at Comerica. Bank and part of Detroit and the community since 1849. By your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers, visit ChevyDetroit.com. See why Chevy drives the Motor City. By Wall Sign Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit. And by T-Mobile, unleashed from the rules of wireless restrictions. Java Chamberlain throwing the rubber now for the Tigers here. Nobody out in the eighth inning. You see. 62nd game for Java. And he's going to be asked to give out Josh Willingham the right hander. Not a lot of history between Willingham and Java Chamberlain. They've only met once, and Java got Josh. So here is Willingham. Three lefties that the Royals have on their bench Dyson, Ibanez, and Carlos Peguero. The uh, Royals have a small village on their bench these days. They've got 11 guys of all these September call ups. Two teams in the pennant race. There's a lot of bodies in the bullpen and on the bench, but I think a lot of them are there to observe playoff baseball or at least the, the smell of playoff yeah. baseball. The stretch runs, seems right. like. A lot of people out there, a lot of managers, a lot of front office personnel, they're kind of balking at the idea of extending rosters to 40 men in September, especially for teams in contention. You don't know a lot about the guys that you're going up against. And what I think baseball might do in the future, they may limit it to using a certain number for that particular night. Now you can't use all 40, but it may be a 25 man roster. It might be 30 guys that you have at your disposal for any given evening, but not all 40. And that's hit the other way. Diving step. Kinsler is going to go to second. Got him there. Wow. Ian Kinsler with a terrific diving play and the presence of mind to get the lead runner. That is huge about the play. The fact that he was able to get Hosmer at second base to keep him out of scoring position. Three steps and a dive. He takes the perfect angle to get there. He snares the ball and it's already by him. And he throws from one knee to second base and throws accurately. Here 
here is Mustakis now with the man at first one out. Terrific play by Ian Kinsler. He's turned in quite a few of those this year. Mustakis takes low. A single for three tonight, batting 208. They've got the big shift on now with Mustakis. Castellano is playing there for the second baseman in between the first and second baseman in the hole. Job now with the 1 1. Swing and a miss. The curveball there by Jabba. Took something off of it as well. This one only had 79 miles an hour. Slow curveball got stock is way out in front. You can see the ball hadn't even got to him yet, and he's already overcommitted. Pull down the right field line. It is troubled and it is fair. It'll bounce into the seats. That'll be a two base hit, keeping the runner at third base, Willingham. Second and third now with one out. Now we talked about Job a little bit last night and the fact that he has thrown so many breaking balls during the course of the year. And it worked very nicely for him the first half of the season, but the second half of the season, he's been giving up quite a few hits. That really was not that poor of a pitch, but and Mustakas in the back of his mind must have been thinking about something soft and he was able to reach out and hit that ball back to right field to get a ground rule double. Back in the fourth inning, Mustakas hit a ball that may have been an extra base hit. Torrey Hunter had position they had positioned Torrey Hunter very well and he was able to scramble over to the corner to rob him of an extra base hit. And that time he just took it a little bit beyond Torrey into the corner. So here is Lorenzo Kane now batting 317 with runners in scoring position. And he shoots one on the ground to second. Kinsler has it there. Kane is out. That'll score a run. RBI number 44 for Lorenzo Kane. Advanced Mustakas to third. That run will be charged to Blaine Hardy. No, actually, will not. That runner was forced out. The base on balls was forced out by Ian Kinsler. Here's Alcides Escobar. Single for three for Escobar. But outside, one ball, no strikes. Kelvin Herrera warming up the hard throwing right hander for Kansas City. Bouncing ball left side. Castellanos has it there, and he's over. Minimal damage done. The Royals get one.
subway and for the Tigers in this one. Well they've had some scattered offense. Torrey Hunter's had a nice game. Couple singles run scored. And a couple of big flies in this one. Two run shot for Rajay and a solo homer for J.D. Martinez. It's a tight one though. It is a four to two ball game and here comes Calvin Herrera out of the bullpen for KC. He is usually their uh, seventh inning guy. He's got a blazing fastball that will touch 100 miles an hour. 52 strikeouts this year for Calvin. Only 23 base on balls. He's been in 61 games. Uh, check in with Justin White now with a preview of what's coming up on Tigers Live post game. Yeah, Mario, coming up immediately after the game, we'll have all of your reaction on Tigers Live. Matt Shepard and Craig Monroe in the Coliseum Studios. I'll be heading into the Tigers Clubhouse and chat with Rajay Davis as well as Max Scherzer. It's all coming up right after the game, right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Guys, back to you for now. Hi, right, Justin. Look forward to it. Thank you very much. And now, J.D. Martinez will lead things off against Calvin Herrera. I guess you got to face these guys at the back end of the bullpen. It's, it's good that you face them with a lead and that they're just trying to get some work now. As Martinez will stand in. And uh, the Royals trying to keep this a two run game and manageable as they get to the ninth. As Herrera checks in. JD with a homer. Sack fly, two RBIs. And Herrera's first pitch at 98 sails low. 98 with some. Late action on it. That's not a straight 98 mile per hour four seam fastball. Well, Herrera has been just uh, one of a couple of guys that has done unbelievable work. He has extended his scoreless streak to 27 and two thirds innings, which dates back to June 27. That's amazing. He's so free and easy with his delivery too, and he gets. Generates so much of that velocity with the strength of his wrist, just flipping that ball and finishing off at the very end. His God given ability right there. Ooh, JD knocked one back off of Herrera. He's going to take it quickly, flip it out at first base. It's a nice job here by Herrera uh, after that ball hit him. Uh, somewhere in the lower half of his body right off his leg. He didn't take very long to find it. He was able to go glove it and then shuffle with the glove to Eric Hosmer for a nice play. And taking a hit away from J.D. Martinez. I'm going to take a look at Herrera to make sure he's all right. The outside of his foot. See it right here where it hit him. That's a reason right there, kids, not to spin off the ball. If you finish off properly, that leg will never be over in that spot unless you're feeling a ground ball to the right side trying to get over to first base. But you can see how he lands on his ankle. It's his push off foot. Thinks it looks like he's going to be all right. See how he's spinning off there? His right leg, his push off leg is way over around, and that ball just finds his foot. Does a good job of reacting, though. That ball goes anywhere but the direction towards first base. JD Martinez gets himself another single. I doubt very seriously if Omar or El Cides Escobar would have been able to get JD Martinez. Here's Castellanos now with one out, and he drives one foul back out of play. Royals tonight have left 10 men on base in this contest. They've had some opportunities, but it's the Tigers up by a pair in the eighth. It's been a tough night for Nick, trying to salvage the night in this at bat. He has struck out three times. Tough guy to try and salvage it against, though. One ball, one strike. That's right. Joe Nathan is tuning up in the Detroit bullpen. He pitched in last night's game, non safe situation tonight. He'll be, as it stands right now anyway, it'll be a safe situation. One and two.
Busted him inside at 99 miles an hour, two and two. Rivers not all that big. They list him at 5'10. A native of the Dominican Republic and only 24 years old. Ball high at 98. Dayton Moore has done a wonderful job with the back end of that bullpen. Greg Holland, their closer. Wade Davis, who they got from the Tampa Bay Rays in the James Shields deal. He was a starter last year for the majority of the year. Then they finally put him in the bullpen. And he did very nicely out there. But the whole key is Herrera in the seventh inning. He has just shut down and he's been able to throw a lot more strikes this year. The base hit from Nick. Well behind in the count, but comes up with a one out single. Here's our Comerica Bank game summary in this one. Scherzer went six and two thirds tonight. And Rajay Davis and JD Martinez with home runs, but overall, Jack Scherzer, pretty good evening. I got to believe he's happy with it. He's in position to win a game if he can get a little help from Joe Nathan out of the pen. He pitched strong, only allowing the one run. You've got to like this swing by Cassianos. This is an emergency hack. He's already spread out. He knows that Herrera's got that blazing fastball, so he pulls his hands very close to the body. He's not trying to pull that upper 90s fastball. He's trying to hit it the opposite way, and really, that's the best approach against a guy that throws very, very hard. Ezekiel Carrera pinch running at first base now with one out. With the two run lead more than likely Cassianos is going to be taken out of the contest anyway for Don Kelly to go to third base. But why not try to steal another run with Carrera over at first base. He stole 43 bases this year down in Toledo. Ezekiel Carrera. Torrey Hunter having a little fun with Cassianos. I mean, Cassianos got down there and got that 98 mile power cheese didn't he. Ball no strikes on Avila. Oil's bullpen has been so good at the back end this year, and they're even without a, a big piece from last year's team and Luke Hochaber, who really made a nice transition to the back end of their bullpen last year. I thought that was going to cost them you know, this year when the season began, and he had to go down with Tommy John surge. But Wade Davis has been as good or even better than uh, he was last year, Hochaber, which is hard to believe. Shaver last year in 58 appearances had a 1.92 earned run average. Davis has been better than that. He found a home in the bullpen. He was one of those young pitchers with promise, projected to be the anchor of their starting rotation. It didn't work out for him there, but found a home in the bullpen. Vila waves and misses two and one. 89 mile per hour changeup thrown there by Herrera. I just wonder a guy that can throw 100 miles an hour like Herrera can. How long will he be able to endure that because that's. Let's face it that's max effort. And you wonder if he cut back just three four miles an hour. Would it extend the life of his arm. What happens to a guy that throws 100 and then all of a sudden gets hurt. Does he have the ability to start throwing breaking balls and off speed. Saw that one by Avila. Yeah, you saw how badly he spun off that ball, though. His back was facing Avila when he ended up at the end of his delivery. See it again right here. <laughs> Looked like a little uh, Jose Valverde esque there, <laughs> celebrating a save. Runner goes on 2 2, strike three call, throw to second, tag, not in time. Carrera steals the base. Navila's out, two gone. Carrera has outstanding speed. He gets an outstanding jump, but he needed to get a very good jump because the catcher, Salvador Perez, is one of the best game throwers from that position. Sixth of the year at the big league level for Carrera. Man in scoring position now with two outs for Romine. That 
That's a total of 49 stolen bases for Carrera between Triple A and the big league. Roll line is over three. It's a really nice weapon to have in the month of September. We've seen the last couple of years certain teams call up guys that can really run, steal your base late. Oh and one. That one triple digits. 100 miles an hour. The thing that astounds me about guys, Jack, can throw 100 miles an hour. This guy's five foot ten. He's a little guy, bringing it up that quick. Well, they have a starter in the rotation that brings it up there pretty quick too. Ventura. Ventura, yeah. One and one. Actually, I think Herrera's got a little more meat on his bones. Built a little stronger. I'm sure is a slightly built guy. About the same height. Two balls, one strike. Romine has a run scored in this ballgame tonight. Shoots one of the shortstop. Tough play for Escobar. And he'll have no play. Everybody is safe. Looked like uh, Escobar was shaded by the runner. Ezekiel Pereira running from second base. Therefore, didn't get a really good look at it. And he may get an error on that play. Not sure how they're going to rule it. But take a look at Ezekiel right in the way of Escobar. And then when the ball got to him, he tried to catch it on the short hop. Didn't make the play cleanly. Ball was hit right off the end of the bat. It might have some real backspin on it. Let's take a look at the Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Roger Davis hasn't played in a couple of days, so you know his legs are fresh, but apparently that bat is very quick today. He got a fastball up from Vargas and hit a two run shot, his eighth of the season. Difference in this ball game right now. That played at the third run for the Tigers. Yeah, Vargas got off to a sluggish start here today, by and large, because he would not use his fastball inside. But after the Tigers scored two in the second, he kind of started pitching differently, and then he became effective. Bouncer back up the middle, and Escobar will tag the back for the out there to retire the side. Tigers get a couple of hits. And two. Here comes Joe Nathan.
Finishing touches on this one four to two is our score and the most popular way to follow the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball. You'll enjoy live look ins replay reviews scores live radio broadcast the MLB.tv game of the day and more get the at bat app for your smartphone or tablet of the app store or visit MLB.com and the Tigers closer is in now Joe Nathan. Joe Nathan looking for his 30th save of the year and 30. Sixth chance that he's had 494 earned run average 49 strikeouts for Joe in 54 games 25 uh, base on balls very important for him to keep their leadoff hitter Aoki off the base pass defensive changes Don Kelly takes over at third base Rajay Davis moves from center to left and uh, as per usual Ezekiel Carrera takes over in center field top of the order coming up against the right hander. Joe Nathan, it's a strike called on Nori Aoki, and the ninth inning is underway. 0 for 4 versus Nathan in his career. Kelly on the grass, third. And Aoki takes the ball low, 1 1. Tigers three outs away from pulling into a first place tie with the Royals. Nathan had a 1 2 3 ninth inning. That was a four run game last night. Missing high, 2 and 1. Swing and a miss, Aoki. Leaving the strike zone there. He's at the build of his camp. He knew he was going to get a fastball on the 2 1 count. He just committed way too early. And then by the time he recognized the ball was up, he just couldn't hold up. Back out of play. Aoki in this game of walk single. He's caught trying to steal back in the first inning. Four to two, Tigers lead both teams with eight hits. Bouncing ball deep in the hole at short. Romine surrounding, throwing, and he is safe at first base. So the leadoff man is on. There is some life now for the Royals. It's a nice job there by Aoki after swinging at the 2 1 fastball up. Don Kelly still playing in with two strikes. Simply slapped one right to the right of Kelly by the time Romine came up with it. No play on Aoki. He runs too well. We talk about the team speed, and this guy in particular. He gets down the line. Romine makes a great play. And a great throw. Aoki now has 24 infield singles. It'll be the ninth hit of the game now for the Royals. And it'll bring up Omar Infante. Tying run coming to the plate. Omar showing bunt, strike one. A little bit of history between these two and Fonte 2 for 11 versus Nathan. Joe Nathan may play a very critical role as this month unravels for the Tigers. Not the typical Joe Nathan that the baseball world has seen for most of his career this year with Detroit, but that could all be erased. With an excellent month of September and beyond. Tigers also uh, getting ready to activate Joaquin Soria as well. So that'll be another quality late inning arm for Brad Ausmus. If you're Joe Nathan, the one thing you must try to do here, and he really hasn't done a great job at it all year, and that's preventing the stolen bases against him while he's been on the mound, he has to try to keep Aoki at first base. 
Bouncing ball slowly left side. Romine. Quick throw. Oh, they called him safe. That's the kind of game that the Kansas City Royals play. They play a game of speed. Well, another because of the high hop to Romine. Again, he does a great job of getting rid of the ball and very strong throw, but that speed is something that not everybody has. And Omar Infante busting down the line. They're going to pitch run for him. He's walking off very slowly. Looked to me like he was safe. Looked like James Hoy, the first base up, the base umpire, wanted to go up with that right hand. But looked like he yep. made the right call. Good call. So they will pinch run for Infante and Gore, one of the September call-ups whose specialty is speed, is now the tying run at first base. Gore's a little bitty fella too. He looks like he's about 13, 14 years old, 5'7, about 150 pounds. So now with the tying runs on, here is Alex Gordon. I love Joe Nathan's gonna get a save tonight. He's gonna need to earn it. First two guys on with speed, and you got the heart of their order coming up next. And Gordon looks at a ball outside, 1 0. Three for 11 career for Gordon versus Nathan. Gordon's been on base a couple of times tonight, he's walked twice. Two infield hits for KC here in the ninth. Two and oh. Now the 2 0. Popped up mile high, first base side to see if it stays in play. Victor drifting back out of play. 2 and 1. It's an out in Oakland. <laughs> By a good margin, too. Yes, it is. Wade Davis, if they can get this thing to the bottom of the ninth, apparently would come on. You can see that he is not exactly overthrowing yet, but getting loose nonetheless. Greg Holland, their closer, has had some tricep problems. Now the 2 1. Strike call in the outside corner. 2 2 on Gordon. That's the last thing the Royals needed in the month of September. One of their starters, Danny Duffy, has gone down with a shoulder ailment and now possibly Greg Holland. See that last pitch from Joe Nathan, a breaking ball that just paints the outer half. Yeah, he started that ball off the plate yeah. and kind of backdoored it. Yep, the action on it caught the outside corner. Now two and two. Salvador Perez on deck. Ooh, just outside Nathan really wanted that one. Three and two. Touch outside though. Don't know if the runners will be on the move here. It may be too risky with a left hander up. If Gordon strikes out, even though Aoki is 21 of 24 in steals of third base in his big league career. Runners hold. Swing and a miss struck him out. Wise choice there to lead the runners put by Ned Yost, their manager. And a really good pitch by Joe Nathan. A nice slider. Yeah, this down one and in the half. And it just bit down and in underneath the hands of the swing of Alex Gordon right there. Great location. Big time pitch right there for Joe Nathan. Fans are excited. Yes, he is. Now Perez. 
Yeah, nice way to end this one would be on a ground ball, double play ball off the bat of Perez. He's already grounded into 21 of those this year. But Nathan has to stay south of the knees to get that ground ball. Kelly guarding the line at third base. That has opened up the left side of the infield to Tad. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1 on Perez. Well, here's where a young hitter, and Perez is still a young hitter, very good hitter. But how much aggression is he going to be? There he swung at what looked like a high slider out of the zone. He wants to win a ball game. He wants to be the hero. He swings and early a lot. Veteran pitcher like Joe Nathan should understand that. Maybe expand the zone a little. And Ned Yo's going to play some uh, mind games now with uh, Joe Nathan and the Tigers. Gerard Dyson now going to pinch run at second base for Ayoki. So one guy with speed for another guy that has blazing speed. So there's the uh, 11 guy bench coming into play. And they have the ability now to take Aoki out of the game, and Gerard Dyson is aboard at second. So two Blazers on the base pass now. Tactical move there by Ned Yost to put a little pressure on Joe Nathan. And with Dyson now standing at second base and the threat of him stealing third. Mission accomplished. In case you're wondering on Dyson, he is 20 of 22 in steals of third base in his big league career. Jack, I know it's easier said than done, but I mean, how in the world do you differentiate and how do you block out the, the fact that you've got that guy at second base and you know he's there to disrupt you mm -hmm. and your catcher? I mean, how do you put it out of your mind to focus well, on the pitch? You do what Joe just did there. Step off. Make make sure that he's aware that you're paying attention to him, number one. But at that point, you've got to really focus on Salvador Perez. You need the out more than you need to worry about what the guy at second base is doing to jockey and try to disrupt your focus. Oh, they're going to throw back, and Tyson spun his wheels, and he is out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Tyson looked like he was going to take off. Joe Nason did the old wheel play where he just picks up his leg and spins. Ian Kinzer was standing on the bag like he was a first baseman. Huge out. Absolutely huge out right there. I thought maybe when he didn't throw it initially he had waited too late But Dyson slipped as he was getting back to second and what a big out. Oh my goodness. What a big out he Kind of all thought themselves there now here comes the crowd With the runner at first and two outs what a gargantuan play and the ground ball foul Dyson's not going to be feeling good there. He's put in the game to do what Rod just talked about. Very good base runner with excellent speed. But the one thing you can't afford to do is take the team out of the game. This crucial of a game, this late in the game, and he gets picked off. So Perez now becomes the tying run. Yeah, they're now going to play behind Gore. They don't care if he runs. The two outs really a meaningless. They're not even going to probably challenge. He takes off. They're not even going to cover second base. Sure, Avila won't even throw. Here's the 0-2. Runner does go. Swing and a miss. None of it matters. That's the ball game. Joe Nathan. Picks Dyson off second, strikes out Perez, and the Tigers win to draw even with KC. That is now the 11th time the Tigers have beaten the Kansas City Royals in 15 meetings in 2014. The 
first two Royals reach here in the ninth, but in the end, Joe Nathan salts this one away, striking out Perez.